The following is a presentation of TSN and Canadian Hockey. Most of the greatest moments in the history of the World Junior Tournament involve games between Canada and Russia. In 1986 in Hamilton, the Russians defeated the Canadians to take home the gold. But the next year, the rivalry turned ugly. The Piazdani punch-up resulted in both nations being disqualified. The next year, the tournament went to Russia, and Theron Fleury and the Canadians came home with gold from Moscow. Three years later in Saskatoon came one of Canada's greatest moments. John Slaney's goal late in the third period gave Canada back-to-back -back goals. The next meaningful meeting came in Red Deer in 1995. Canada prevailed, winning the fourth of five championships. But the tide shifted two years ago in Winnipeg. Despite a boisterous home crowd and brilliant goaltending from Roberto Luongo, the Russians triumphed in overtime in the gold medal game. Now the tournament is back in Russia, and the Canadians look to write the next chapter in international hockey's most storied rivalry. Day four of the World Junior Championship brings the hockey superpowers head-to-head. -head. It's Canada against Russia. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our TSN Control Center. I'm Gord Miller, along with Bob McKenzie. Uh, at the Olympics and the World Cup level, Canada-Russia may have lost some of its luster, but certainly not at this level. And this is not a rivalry dining out on great moments from the 1980s and 90s. This is a rivalry that is right up to the moment. Go back through the last three World Junior Tournaments. Canada and Russia have met in the medal round each time. In the semifinal in 2000, last year in Sweden, it was Russia coming away with a 3-2 victory. In 99 in Winnipeg, of course, that was the gold medal game, won by the Russians in overtime 3-2. And in the 88 quarterfinal, also in overtime, Russia beat Canada 2-1. The last five meetings between these countries have been decided by one goal. Bob McKenzie, it's the game we look forward to every time they meet, and uh, this one doesn't appear to be any different. No, but there is a little bit of a twist, and it'll be interesting to see how the two teams handle that. This is a round-robin game, a preliminary round-robin game, where it's not life and death. Each of those last three meetings you talked about was a winner-take-all, the other team goes home scenario. I'll be very interested to see what the mental makeup of both teams is for a game like this. Obviously, two very talented hockey teams, but not winner-take-all. And uh, the, the real key here for both teams is not even so much winning the hockey game. A win would be great, make no mistake about it. But you want to play well. You want your team to get better as this tournament goes along. Both these teams traditionally have been slow starters in this tournament, and uh, both of them have had ties that they weren't happy with. The Russians 3-3 with Switzerland, Canada 2-2 with the Finns, and they both had blowouts over Belarus. So uh, it'll be interesting to see which team is on the, uh, the biggest incline up. And it's interesting to note that the uh, Canadians beat Belarus 9-0. The Russians uh, hammered them 12-1, outshooting them 47-6 in that game. Now let's take you through what's uh, going on on this day four of the tournament. Switzerland beat Belarus by a score of three to one. The Swiss next up for Canada and they are a team to watch. A lot of NHL people talking about how good this Swiss team is at this World Junior Championship. Now the standings. First of all in Pool A the Czech Republic and the United States are both 2-0 and, and they meet today. Actually the game happens at the same time as the Canada-Russia game. And in Pool B check this out. Switzerland 1-1-1, one, one, and one. Russia, Canada, and Finland all even at 1-0-1. One, oh, and one. So obviously the winner of this game today between Russia and Canada will have the leg up on first place in the pool. The top four teams in each pool will advance to the medal round. Uh, we have talked about this uh, over the years. Uh, last year in uh, Sweden, the Russians had a small, skillful team, and yet they played the style that really didn't seem to show that. Uh, remember the gold medal game against the Czechs was scoreless before it went to a shootout. No, that's right. They do play a very trapping style. They very, very rarely forecheck, 
but they're also extremely skilled. And when you do make a mistake and turn over the puck in the neutral zone or your own blue line, they have the skill to come back and make you pay for it big time. So that'll be a really interesting facet for the Canadian team today. They'll have to have a lot of patience. There's a lot of mental toughness involved in a game like this to play that slow, gritty, almost in your face between the blue line style that isn't really pleasing to the eye a lot of the time, but when you make a mistake, all of a sudden it's in the back of your net. And uh, make no mistake about it, when you watch this game today, if you watch the tape of the uh, Canada-Russia game from 1991, the Canada-Soviet game, actually, you'll see a host of future National Leaguers. Right now, their focus is on the World Junior Tournament. So is ours. Let's take you to Moscow. You're Paul Romanuk and Gary Green. Come on inside the Team Canada dressing room and join equipment manager Greg Mayer. He sharpens 15 to 20 pairs of skates per day. Jay Bomeister and Nick Schultz very fussy about their skates. They're sharpened every day. Heading go. into this one, Greg gives the edge to Canada. It's a big matchup. Is there any other kind against the Russians? Hello again, everybody. Well, for Canada, the alarm clock in this tournament went off yesterday against Finland, albeit it was a learning experience, but not one in which they had to suffer a loss. Well, they got a late wake-up call, folks, but they didn't miss their flight. They still got a point out of yesterday's game. The key for them today is to pick up the tempo even more so. They didn't adjust well against Team Finland. They were too slow early in the game. At the same time, they weren't moving the puck like they did against Belarus, of course. What they've got to do is they've got to drive to the net more. They've got to make sure that early in this hockey game, they take control of it. On the other hand, they're going to have to make sure that they move that puck quickly because this ice is going to be slow out there. The ice has been a factor without any question. Of course, both teams have to play on it. But for the Russians, they're going to play, yes, probably, you're all going to groan, but they're going to play a very defensive-minded trapping game here today. And as a result, slower ice will be a benefit to them. Well, despite the T word, I know it's not going to dampen your enthusiasm for this game. I was told by Canadian hockey officials you are sending in the neighborhood of 200 emails per day via the Canadian hockey website to the players, wishing them well. They want me to pass along the fact they're getting all those emails. And in particular, thanks to Brandon Reed, who apparently has relatives wallpaper from coast to coast in Canada. Gord? Wait till he finds out how many relatives he's got if he signs an NHL contract. Uh, still to come, a feature look at Jason Spezza. And when we come back, we'll hear from Canadian coach Stan Butler. With the season's best deals, everybody's trading in their old vehicles to take advantage of the General Motors holiday rate break. Everybody. Get 0.9% purchase financing or no payments and no interest for 12 months on most new vehicles. The General Motors Holiday Rate Break for a limited time at your Chevrolet Oldsmobile dealer. I first met Yolanda when she came to the store trying to plan her wedding. Well, I pretty much needed everything. Most brides are stressed. I only had seven weeks to pull it all off. She was slightly stressed about getting a dress. I just happened to have a dress and told her that she could borrow it. I don't think Yolanda believed me when I offered her the dress. I got um, my flowers, my dress, and I got my husband's wedding band there. I do like helping brides. I think I got important things at Walmart. you to a little one-on-one. -on -one. Try Rayo back. If you don't think they're as good as the other guys, you get your money back. You can't lose. I like that. Time for the TSN Playbook Trivia Question. Who was the leading point getter at the 1991 World Junior Championships in Saskatoon? Doug Waite, Havel Bure, or Eric Lindros? Stay tuned to this program for the correct answer and play.
Sometimes you look me so hardly You make me feel like a strong man But now you look at me over Cause I'm a man and you know how to watch Look with moderation Tiso, hypnotic suggestion An NCAA triple header only on TSN Canadians getting set for their battle with the Russians. It's day four of the 2001 World Junior Hockey Championship. Well, yesterday, Canada hit its first bump in the road in this tournament. The 2-2 tie with Finland did not please the Canadian coaching staff at all, especially after the Canadians had destroyed Belarus in the first game. But time to put that behind them, I suppose. Stan Butler, the Canadian coach, spoke with our Paul Romanuk a little earlier. Well, it's a tournament, so they play games before other games, and this is a match that went on a little bit before the Canadian game between Belarus and Switzerland, and an interested spectator sitting in the stands with me, a Canadian head coach, Stan Butler. Although, uh, I guess you don't have to worry about both these teams in the immediate future, because coming up very shortly, a huge, huge test against the Russians. Are you nervous? Oh, I'm not nervous. I'm just ready to go. I mean, the Russians are a great hockey team and a great hockey nation, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out a little bit more about our team, and that's, that's the whole key to this tournament is every game you find out a little bit more about your team, and you got to have everything refined so when you do get into the medal round that uh, you know exactly where you are and where you want to go. It's funny, uh, and I guess this is just because Canada has such high expectations of their teams that they send to this tournament, but uh, you had a great comment after the game yesterday. Guys, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It was a tie. Uh, do you have to sort of reinforce that to everyone? Well, I don't know. I don't have to reinforce it to anybody but the 22 players in our room and our, our coaching and support staff. I mean, they're the people that I'm responsible for right now, and they're the people that got to go on the ice and do the job. And I think it's great to have high expectations, but, you know, through all these type of tournaments, we got to put everything in perspective. And, you know, you, you're not going to win every game. It'd be nice if you if you could, but if you don't, you could still win the tournament, and that's the way we got to look at them. Team had a hard time finishing yesterday. Does that concern you? I don't know. I mean, me, I don't know if we had a hard time finishing or they had a very good goalie. I mean, uh, there's always two ways to look at everything. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, we were concerned we only scored two goals, but when we looked over to the tape last night, we had some real good chances, and especially when it was 2-1. I mean, Danny Heatley, Jason Jaspers, you know, both had chances that could have made it 4-1, and I mean, if we get one or one of those in the net, then, uh, you know, that, that last goal they scored is an insignificant goal. So I think the biggest thing, Paul, we've got to do is really bear down around the net on our chances. Stan, thanks for your time. Uh, be a lot of people tuning in. Good luck. Thanks very much, Paul. I appreciate it. If you'd like to hear more from Stan, uh, be sure to check out his daily diary. It's on the Canadian Hockey website at www.canadianhockey.ca. All right, well, Stan Butler uh, makes the comment, uh, we'll find out what kind of team we've got today. And uh, I think specifically, and we talked to the Canadian coaches about this before they left, the one area they might have been concerned about was on the blue line and uh, Canada does have experience back there but there's a, a weird mix of very experienced players and completely inexperienced players. Yeah we've talked about it before five of the seven players on the Canadian blue line are eligible to come back and play in this tournament a year from now. Stan Butler joked when the team left for Toronto to go to Moscow that maybe the coach from next year's team will send him a Christmas card if nothing else. He's going to try and win with an inexperienced crew, but they do have three players back from last year's team. Steve McCarthy, Barrett Jackman, and Jay Bomeister. Bomeister, of course, isn't eligible until the 2002 National Hockey League entry draft, so he's a weird mix of one of the veterans on the team and a guy whose draft year is still a full year away. But there's going to be extreme pressure on a lot of young guys that haven't played at this level before against a Russian team that has all sorts of first-rounders from the National Hockey League and a lot of Chicago Blackhawk prospects to boot. Yeah, no kidding. The uh, Chicago Blackhawks have drafted four players from this Russian team, including two in the first round. Mike Smith, the general manager of the uh, Chicago Blackhawks, you might remember from his days in Winnipeg and Toronto, does like players from Russia. He has a PhD in Russian studies, and he is studying this game very closely this evening. So will a lot of National Hockey League people, because this game features two of the top prospects for the upcoming NHL draft, including Jason Spezza. And when we come back, a feature look at the young star of the Windsor Spitfires. For two lifelong friends. You wrote here from Texas. Yes, sir. The adventure of a lifetime. I know the old man likes you. That don't mean he's going to set still for you courting his daughter. Just became. He's going to get me in trouble. You are in trouble. A fight for their lives. I knew it would come to this. Don't go down there. Matt Damon. I'm going to make it right. You make bad trouble for yourself. Mr. I got trouble you never even heard of. 
the pretty horses. Now in theaters everywhere. It's as digital as documents get. Digital copiers, network printers, color imaging. Closer Amita is where documents are going. A Kyocera Document Solutions Company. Billing and payment in real time. Integrating customers and suppliers on the net. Yeah. Where you get your ideas is your business. Helping you make them work is ours. E-Solutions from Microsoft. just blast through your batteries. They blast through your money. That's why you should arm yours with Rayovac. They last as long as standard Duracell and Energizer, but cost less. How about a little one-on-one? -on -one? Uh-oh. Rayovac. Last as long as standard Duracell and Energizer for less. I challenge you to a little one-on-one. -on -one. Try Rayovac. If you don't think they're as good as the other guys, you get your money back. You can't lose. I like that. Sunday mornings. Join the team of John Wells and company and get all the extra sports news and information from here in Canada and around the world. Insight, analysis, commentary, and compelling features about subjects that matter to dedicated sports fans. Focus on the week that was and the week that will be in the world of sports news and information. Sports Desk Extra with John Wells. Sundays on TSN. Just minutes away from the start of the round robin game between Canada and Russia on day four of the 2001 World Junior Hockey Championship. Jason Spezza has been on the hockey consciousness since he was 15 years old. He played the Ontario Hockey League for the Brampton Battalion. Now he is in his draft year, finally. And the player traded to the Windsor Spitfires earlier this season is having a breakout year. As a 16-year-old, Jason Spezza last year became the second youngest player ever to suit up for Canada at the World Junior Championship. And he was alongside another 16-year-old bronze medalist, teammate Jay Bowmeister. Only a handful of 16-year-olds have ever played for Canada in the tournament, a list that includes Wayne Gretzky in 1978 and Eric Lindros in 1990. It's a great honor to be part of uh, you know, those guys. You know, they're all great hockey players, and to be one of those guys uh, chosen as a 16-year-old, it was a big thing for me in my life. It was a learning experience for him last year. He probably wanted more ice time, but the value that he learned from what it takes to play, uh, he's matured physically and mentally. Uh, you know, he should be a big part of our hockey club this year. After a successful evaluation camp last year under head coach Claude Julian, Spezza found himself on the fourth line with limited ice time. And for the first time in his hockey career, he was on the bench watching his teammates play. Well, personally, obviously, it was frustrating. I expected to go out and play, and I think everybody expects that of, of themselves. And uh, But, you know, I had to realize that this tournament's all about team, and you have to suck things up uh, personally in order for the team to do well. So uh, that's the big thing with, with, with this tournament is to really realize your role. This season has been a difficult one for Spezza. As a member of the woeful Mississauga Ice Dogs of the OHL, Spezza continued to produce with seven goals in 15 games. But Don Cherry's team continued to flounder, and finally Spezza requested a trade. Well, you know, Mississauga is a great organization, and Mr. Whiffen and Mr. Cherry do a good job over there. But uh, I thought it was just time for a change for me, and uh, the opportunity was there to get to play under such a great coach as Tom Webster and Mr. Mike Kelly, who's uh, also a great general manager. And to get a chance to go to an organization like that, uh, the time was just right. Since being Delta Windsor, Spezza has put up big numbers with 41 points in 22 games. Earlier this season, he was the consensus number one pick for the upcoming NHL draft but he has since slipped to number two behind Ilya Kovalchuk, a player he'll face in the World Junior Championship. 
it's always good when people doubt you because then you have to go out and prove it. And uh, you know, in my mind, I believe that I can be the best player possible that I can be. And uh, you know, it's good to have a little bit of criticism sometimes, you know, to keep you grounded. But uh, I want to go out and prove to everyone that I can be number one overall. And at this year's tournament, Spencer is reunited with head coach Stan Butler, who coached him as an underage 15-year-old with the Brampton Battalion of the OHL. Jason's just an easygoing kid who, who loves to play the game of hockey, who is a very happy person, who gets along with everybody, and uh, is striving to be the best he can be. And uh, there's no doubt that he, he's a prime example of uh, someone who has a lot of skill and a lot of talent. If for some reason, a lot of people in this country don't think we've developed those types of players anymore. In last year's bronze medal game against the U.S., Spezza was the fifth shooter listed in case there was a shootout, meaning that Canada's medal hopes could have rested on his 16-year-old shoulders. This year, as a 17-year-old, he hopes he can be the player that Canada counts on for gold. A couple of weeks ago, Bob McKenzie put out his top prospects list at the midway point. Ilya Kovalchuk and Jason Spezza are one and two. Worth noting that Chisov, number six, and Svitov, number seven, are both playing in this game today. Well, let's focus a little bit on Jason Spezza for the moment. Uh, the, the only knock you'll hear about Jason Spezza is about his skating. Now, is that significant enough? to knock him down to number two. Well, he's a good skater, but he's not a great skater. And he, as good a skater as he is sometimes, he has, does what a lot of young players do, especially when you're as smart and as skilled and as creative and have the hands, that sometimes you think the game too much. And there are tendencies where you'll have a player, and Eric Lindros used to do this, and Mary Lemieux used to do this, times when the feet don't move because the mind is thinking and the hands are going, and quite often you can get by on your talent. At this level, Jason Spezza needs to move his feet and skate as fast as he can all the time. And if he, he's capable of picking his pace up to that game, but he has to go out and do it for the scouts who are there to watch him today. And you think about great matchups uh, uh, for number one. You go back to uh, Red Deer in 1995 when Wade Redden and Brian Burrard went toe-to-toe -to -toe in that tournament. Both acquitted themselves well, and Burrard wound up being the number one pick in the draft. So it's the game within the game. And for more on that, back to Moscow with Paul Romanek and Gary Green. Uh, we have a matchup possibly between the two best teams in this tournament. We'll wait and see about that. We have a matchup unquestionably between the two highest ranked prospects heading into the upcoming NHL draft. And let's start off talking about Jason Spezza of the Canadian team. He first came to national attention about one year ago in the World Junior Hockey Championship when he played as a 16 year old. In his first game this year, he scored a goal. And in the last game, look at this move. Deeks the goalie out from behind the net, feeds Brad Boyd. Spezza is a real talent. Well, that particular play right there just shows Jason's great creativity, his smartness around the net and behind the net as well. He's got tremendous skill level. He's got great passion for the game. But it's, it's his attitude, his character, Paul, that everyone likes about him. He's a good team leader. The other player we're going to talk about is Ilya Kovalchuk of the Russian team. It was also about one year ago that he came to the attention of North American hockey fans. He played in an under-17 tournament in Canada over the holiday season. He picked up 14 points in six games against some of the best players in the world. He is big, he is mean, and he's a very different player than Spezza. He's very hungry, hungry to score, hungry for the puck, and you're right, he is mean. Sometimes, though, he has been known to be selfish, and he has even shown that thus far in this tournament. We'll watch for him specifically today in that department. But this guy, it appears, wants to be number one. He wants to show everyone, all the NHL scouts and general managers here today, that he is indeed number one. Now, I have heard from some, in fairness, that that selfishness aspect is somewhat exaggerated. We'll see how he performs in this game. Another name you'll want to remember is Alexander Svitov. There are some scouts, and no matter who you talk to, every scout seems to have a different opinion, who you say Svitov could be the best of the three. It's going to be a great game. Gord? The only thing the scouts agree on is that the coffee in Moscow isn't very good. The game should be, though, and it's coming up next. The World Junior Hockey Championship, brought to you by the Royal Bank Financial Group, by Nike, by ESSO, a proud sponsor of the Canadian Hockey Association and hockey throughout Canada and by Air Canada. This may be the best thing you watch all night. Crown Royal. Yes, it's that smooth. Sometimes you look 
me so highly You make me feel like a strong man But now you're looking me over Cause I'm a man and you know how to watch Look with moderation Tiso, hypnotic suggestion We love to see you smile we love to see you smile at McDonald's, so we're trying harder than ever to make sure every single visit is enjoyable. Now there's even more McValue to smile about when you come into McDonald's. Like our delicious Chicken McNuggets. Six Chicken McNuggets are now just an incredible $1.49 plus tax every Tuesday at McDonald's. We love to see you smile. Six Chicken McNuggets, just $1.49 every Tuesday. Never has so much power gone into our battery. Introducing Duracell Ultra. With new M3 technology, it's the most powerful alkaline battery in the world. In the NBA, they play to win, and you can too. In the Play NBA Trivia Challenge. Watch national NBA broadcasts on CTV and TSN for trivia questions. Call in for your chance to win great prizes, including a trip for four to NBA All-Star 2001. Or log on to NBA.com slash Canada for more chances to win. Play NBA Trivia Challenge. Get in the game. The Magic take on the Knicks. NBA Basketball TSN next Thursday. The World Junior Hockey Championship. Brought to you in part by Chevrolet. Safe and fun hockey. By Molson Canadian. It's a Canadian game. And by Microsoft eSolutions. Where you get your ideas is your business. Where you get solutions is ours. We mentioned earlier the last five games between Canada and Russia have been decided by one goal. The story of Canada and Russia or Canada and the Soviet Union in this tournament has always been Canadian goaltending. In 91 in Saskatoon, the Russians outshot Canada 17-3 to in the third period, and Canada scored the only goal, John Slaney. So clearly, Maxime Ouellette is a big focus here. Rarely in the history of the world junior hockey does Canada really outplay a lot of its opposition. It really does often come down to goaltending, and they're going to need that for Maxime Ouellette. And the question mark going in is always, what are the Russian goaltenders going to be like? And quickly, you say that it doesn't matter if you win or lose today? It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's how you play the game. Sounds a little corny, but you have to play well. You can lose a game by a goal, and it won't be that devastating. If you lose big or you don't play well and you lose by three or four goals, that can be devastating and derail the momentum the team's trying to gain goals. Going into the medal round. And that can be said for either side. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on this one. We hope you'll enjoy it too. To Moscow now, Paul Romanuk and Gary Green, Canada and Russia. Well, the last time these two teams played in a game that wasn't a quarterfinal, a semifinal, or a gold medal clinching game was 1994. They're almost always significant at this tournament. Maxime Ouellette gets the call for Canada following a line of outstanding goaltenders before him. At the other end, it is Andrei Medvedev, the best young goaltender in the Soviet Union after Brace Galov, who was drafted by Anaheim last year. Referee is from Denmark. Linesmen are from Sweden and Switzerland. Starting goaltenders brought to you by Chevrolet. Safe and fun hockey. Russia is the home team. They've elected to wear their whites. That's a little bit unusual. Canada in their reds. And we are underway. Jay Bomey 
Easter with the puck for Canada. And he will skate it in deep offside. Stan Butler was pretty cool and calm today. He wasn't too concerned about his team's performance yesterday against Finland. He knew that they had to do some things better, but at the same time, he's a very positive coach. Like most good coaches, prefers to accentuate the positive. Home Easter, skating back after it. Being pursued there in the corner by Duma. Gets it up and around the boards. We'll let you know as soon as Kovalchuk steps out onto the ice. Kornea sends it up around the boards for the Russians. And down the ice, icing is waved off. This is McKenzie for Canada. Puts it up ahead there to Morissette, not able to hang on to it. This is Morissette, McKenzie, and Jasper. That's been the energy line for Canada. Did a great job in that role yesterday, setting the table for Heatley, Lundmark, and Camilleri, who came over the boards just after them. Peter Vorobiev is again the Russian junior coach. He got fired this year from the Russian Super League from his team, but yet was able to maintain his junior job. He has been making sure his players talk about defense, and when they get the opportunity, he wants them to bury it. But he's not worried about getting a lot of opportunities. He wants them not to make a mistake. Each of these teams with a tie and a win in the tournament. The Russians tying Switzerland in their opening game and then blowing out Belarus. Canada with a win over Belarus and a tie against Finland. Shostin trying to get it out in front, but Jackman sends it up to Camilleri. Tips it across. On the move is one mark. In there deep, being ridden to the corner. Soluyanov gets tangled up there. Back of the goal. Heatley into the fray after it. Lundmark is parked out in front. Heatley comes out himself, shoots. And that is stopped in hell by Medvedev. Good shift by the big line. They've all got to get it going today. When they roll them over, they have all got to contribute. Brandon Reed was the leading scorer on this team last year. He's got great quickness. He might be the best skater out there. McCarthy and Bowmeister are great skaters. Players with speed today for Canada have got to use that speed through the neutral zone especially. Rafi Torres up after it. Reed leaping into the corner. Drops it back down for Torres. He had a couple of great hits in the game yesterday. Comes around for boys. Boys. Fought off the check, but couldn't get the puck right in front of the net. The Russians were baked back quickly. Konev trying to drive his way through. Chistov, the Russian captain, number 25, leveled in the corner by Torres. Torres bashing and crashing. The puck comes out there for Obiev, number 18, trying to get loose. Good job by Nick Schultz to tie him up and freeze him in the corner, but a penalty coming up. And it is going to be against Canada's Rafi Torres for roughing. Torres continues to want to take the body. He's a physical player, and that's the way he has to get into games. He's got to be taking the body. It's just so difficult for him here at times. He's trying to do it effectively by using his shoulder. At that time, he may have got his arm up a little bit too much. At least the referee thought so. Reed and Jasper is out there for Canada, along with Bull Meester and McCarthy in the penalty killing role. Kovalchuk is not in the ice yet for the Russians. Reed going after it, and he will chop the puck down the ice. And Canada have yet to have a power play goal scored against them in this tournament. Four Russians back. Trying to coax that puck loose. Great work by Jason Jaspers to gum up the works there for a few seconds. And he does it again here. Jaspers bumped along the board. Volchenko watching him. What a shift for Jason Jaspers. 120 to go on the Russian power play. Muratov, he was the leading scorer on this Russian team one year ago in the World Juniors, plays it in deep. Koya works it across, and the puck just coming outside the blue line. Taking a look at the Russian lineup today, we talked about Spitov's line along with Kovalchuk. They are the big line that you have got to be concerned about. So is Dumazo. They are both very offensively potent. Schaefer, well, he played in Halifax, and the question is, is he going to play defense 
or is he going to play forward? He's listed as a defenseman here. He has played both over his career. Komachuk is on the ice now, and he has the puck. Number 17 for the Russians, back deep in his own end. Turning it over that time. Morissette plays it around the boards. Jackman up there. Saucers it in around back of the Russian goal. 50 seconds left in the power play for Russia. And a strong kill so far for Canada. In particular, the work of Jason Jaspers deserves to be singled out. Single-handedly killing off about 20 seconds of the Russian power play. Here comes Kovalchuk. Look at this. Oh, what a stop by Wallet. What a rush by Kovalchuk. Just turn it on. He scored a goal similar to that the other night in a game against Switzerland. Just burst by the defense and buried it. Here comes Canada on the way back. Oh, in over the blue line. Morissette is with him. Tried to pass it across in front. That just failed to click. Ten seconds left in the Russian power play. Played just over four minutes of this opening period at 0-0. Canada and Russia at the World Junior Championship. McCarthy back after it. Covers that and they jab after it along the boards. McCarthy comes in and he decked his man Shostin. He's without his helmet, then he was also without his glove. Popovic steps in over the line. He'll go hard to the corner. Centers it out in front of the net. Ott was there but couldn't get his stick on it. Up along the wall. Stoll trying to get loose. Ott was dumped away from the play. Teams back at even strength. And an icing call on Russia. A spirited start to this one, and watch this drive by Kovalchuk. You talk about his meanness, well, and his hungriness for the puck. Kovalchuk just wanted that puck badly, and he was going to go end-to-end. -end. He was going to split the defense. Yeah, he did all of those folks, and walked right in on top of Ouellette. And once again, Ouellette made a big save, as he did many times yesterday. Kovalchuk is still only 17, plays for Spartak Moscow. Up along the boards, Camilleri. This is Canada's big line out there. Camilleri, Heatley, and Lundmark. Lundmark, oh, what a move! Shoots! That stopped. Lundmark, nice little move coming out of the corner. Now here's Heatley. Here's Camilleri. He almost popped it in. Now Heatley with it. Looking around, assessing the situation. Gets it to Lundmark. Down low for Camilleri. Centers it out in front. Heatley was moving in, bearing down on the net, but he couldn't get his stick on it. Great Chikov after it along the board. Stolen by Heatley. It's been a long ship for this line. Legs must be feeling a little heavy. Lundmark after it. Gets it up to the corner for Camilleri. Lundmark. Back for Camilleri. Borobiev bumped his man. Puck comes up around the boards. And now Heatley with it. I would think he'll want to just dump it in and get a change, and that's exactly what he does. They knew that they had to get off the ice, and so you had to get that puck down deep. Canada made a mistake not doing that yesterday on a change, and it cost them. Barkunov passing the puck up ahead. Pass comes across. Chernov looking for the return feed. It's number 17, pardon me, number 27. Couldn't get it to him. Shagodev up along the boards, knocked away from him. Spets is out there now for Canada. Set up that beautiful goal yesterday from back of the net. Hamhues around to Jackman. Gets it back. Hamhues. Long pass up ahead. Stepping in over the line is Stoll. Spencer was high in the slot. That was Steve Ott breaking in there too. Ott working away behind the net. Persistence almost paying off. He couldn't quite twist away from Schaefer. Spezza gets it back to Jackman. It's a wrist shot up and a penalty coming up. It's a high sticking call. We will sort it out for you when we come back. Introducing the Chevrolet Impala. The comfort of a roomy six seat interior. The security of a five star frontal safety rating the performance of a V6 engine, and the dependability of a Chevrolet. All for under 25000 or get 0.9% purchase financing up to 48 months. The pleasure's back with the Chevrolet Impala. Mikhail Yakubov in the penalty box for high sticking. 
10th overall pick in the draft to Chicago. Or Yakubov, I guess they call him in North America. You've uh, noticed, no doubt, we're North Americanizing, North Americanizing all the pronunciations. Far be it from the Russians to say their names correctly. Bomeister up after it. Rolled away from him. Comes back out to McCarthy. Here comes Heatley. Heatley looking for Camilleri. Drops it back. Camilleri backhand shot. That's knocked away. Good job. McCarthy. Good job to keep that puck in, sending it up towards the goal. Here's Heatley. Tried to center it in front, went off the skate. This line has had a couple of good shifts. Heatley, Lundmark, and Camilleri. And the fans hollering for a penalty there. Canada with 104 to go on the power play. Lundmark drops it back for Heatley. Here's Lundmark again. Gets it out. Camilleri shoots. That was blocked. Schultz moved in. The puck wasn't sitting for him. He'll settle things down. 48 seconds to go on the power play. Shoots just wide. Svitov is trailing up there. He'll take the feed now. Tried to pressure his way in, and Jackman. McCarthy, all back there. He was stuck right to him, was McCarthy. And Canada coming back with 24 seconds to go on the power play. Schultz to Spezza, just went off his stick. And here come the Russians with numbers. This could be trouble. Justine gets it across. Oh, what luck was there with a save. Struggling. And he finally covers it up. The puck came loose, but the referee had lost sight of it. Canada getting caught at the line. Russia came down with the odd man advantage. And it was Wallet who bailed his team out. Well, after a good, quick Canada rush, all of a sudden, Spezza missed the pass. It went off of his stick, and it created the two-on-one opportunity. But Maxime Wallet, as he did yesterday early in the Finland game, ended up bailing his teammates out. That puck was laying there, but Jackman was able to push it underneath, at least it was let for a while. Looked like Kriadshikov, who was up there on the play, was able to lean out and get his stick on that pass. Teams are back at even strength, coming up on the halfway point of this opening period. 0-0, Canada and Russia. Vorobiev moving in, sharp angle shot. Skitters up around the boards. Kriadshikov after it. Ryabchikov put right over the boards and into the Canadian bench, and he gets back out and into the play. Here's McKenzie. Gets it up ahead. Delayed penalty coming up. A Canadian player on the ice back in the neutral zone. That's McKenzie. It's a high-sticking call against Russia. Live from Moscow, this is the World Junior Hockey Championship. Buckley's cough mixture, Mr. Frank Buckley. Suffering from a cough due to a cold, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you're going to feel a lot better very soon. This is the bad news. Oh! Well, McKenzie ends up not getting a high stick. He got an elbow here from Nepriev, who has been their leading point getter in this tournament so far. So Canada with its second power play chance of the game. And they didn't really do much in the first one. In fact, Russia had the best scoring chance when they caught Canada flat-footed just inside the Russian blue line and broke down in a two-on-one. They actually gave Nefriev the penalty for heist. I think even though we could see it was an elbow, it was a Washington Capitals draft pick. And the puck goes out of play. Outside of the power play situation, Paul, talking five aside, I've been surprised at how well the Russians have played in this first period. I mean, as far as aggressively forechecking, they haven't been laying back and trapping in the neutral zone. They've made sure that third man has been high, though. 140 to go on the power play for Canada. And the Russians 
doing a good job of picking off Canadian passes in the neutral zone in this first period. Here comes Heatley. Gets it up ahead. Camilleri moving in. He was upended there by Volchenko. Here's McCarthy. Over to Bonnister. Sends it in deep. Volchenkov sends it up around the boards. McCarthy throws it back up. Volchenkov with a big hit. Ottawa draft pick throwing his weight around. And the puck pops up off the meshing, so we get a whistle with 101 to go in the Canadian power play. With Anton Volchkinov going down and making a nice block as he put his whole body in front of that hard slap shot. Stan Butler's team is just trying to get into a good scoring position. There's no use just shooting from any position out there. At the same time, if you're going to shoot from the point, you've got to make sure somebody gets in front. That hasn't been easy for Canada yet. Here comes Vita. Long shot. That was a heck of a shot from just over center ice. It was a bullet. Canada have been having trouble, Paul, with their short passes. They've got to start connecting on them. The Russians have anticipated those short passes very well. Schultz shot that and it bounces up over the boards and out of play. Well, Kovachuk has had a good scoring chance in this game. Jason Spezza, the young Canadian star, still looking for his first. His dad, Reno, told me that when he was just a young man at five years of age, he wanted already to play professional hockey. He said he used to sit there and watch hockey games, including the World Junior, on the couch, and he would amaze his father at already knowing names of players on Canada and in the National Hockey League. Great passion for the game. And some added spark back into his game since he was traded to Windsor in the Ontario Hockey League. He was sort of languishing with Mississauga, one of the weaker franchises in Canadian junior hockey, and really wasn't developing along, I don't think, at the pace some people would have expected. And he's been playing with Steve Ott, who he's had an opportunity to also play with here on this team. McCarthy clears it in. Red Shikov couldn't get it out. Let's see what Canada can do with the remaining 20 seconds of this power play. Boys, looking. He was looking for Spezza there back of the goal. That's where Spezza set up that nice play in the game yesterday, but that didn't work out that time. Brad Boys was the recipient of that nice pass in yesterday's game against Finland from Jason Spezza. Brad Boys has got the abilities to finish off. He's a good goal scorer. And Toronto Maple Leafs hope that he becomes even a better goal scorer. He has a reputation in the Ontario Hockey League of scoring big goals, game-breaking goals. He scored one for Canada yesterday. He was voted one of the most dangerous players in the Ontario Hockey League. Canada 0 for 2 in the power play. They've had three shots. Penalized player back on. Coming up in the 11:40 mark of this first period. In over the line. Cornea shoots. Let's fire that one wide. And Torres gets it out. Here's Boyce. Trying to shift in towards the goal. Torres jumping up after it. Now Schultz. Passing it across. Popovic just firing it in. Here's Schultz. Gets it up to Reed. Popovic jumping up into the attack. Here he's in deep. Trying to get it out in front. Puck bouncing around there at the side. Volchenkov looking for it. Here's Zygamanis. Dropped it off for Reed. Zygamanis trying to muscle his way to the front of the net. Yakubov trying to get it out. Now here's Reed. Shoots. And that is grabbed and tied up in front of the net. And Ott in there to agitate a little bit. That's something he does well. With the season's best deals, Everybody's trading in their old vehicles to take advantage of the General Motors holiday rate break. Everybody. Get 0.9% purchase financing or no payments and no interest for 12 months on most new vehicles. The General Motors holiday rate break for a limited time at your Chevrolet Oldsmobile dealer. Real Roscovev ends up taking a cross-checking penalty. He plays a real physical game. He loves to compete. Only at average skill level. Puck drilled there by Heatley. That almost took the goaltender's head off. So Canada, on its third power play of the game, 0 for 2 so far. The game is tied at 0. 
play 12.50 of this opening period. Lee Camilleri and Lundmark out there, the big threesome for Canada. Jacqueline and McCarthy back at the blue line. That pushed up ahead there, Dumo was looking for it. Dumo, one of three returning players from last year on this Russian team. McCarthy gets it back for Heatley. Gains the blue line, and Camilleri will shovel it in deep. McCarthy tried to get it to Lundmark. He took a slash there. Lonev laying a little bit of lumber on. Puck comes up there to Heatley. Lundmark had a notion to jump for it, but couldn't get there. Volchenkov clearing it down the ice. Canada are trying to go to the net more today. It's something they didn't do well yesterday against Finland, but at the same time, they're having difficulties today doing it. The Russians just aren't allowing it. Jackman pitches off for Spezza. He will backhand it in. 45 seconds left in the power play for Canada. And the Russians with solid penalty killing in this first period. The Russians are stronger defensively, Paul. Physically, they're stronger. And Hughes clears it in. Spezza up after it. Bo Meister back to the blue line. Works it up. Spezza waiting. Here's Reed. Trades off with Spezza there. Back for Bo Meister and rolled to his backhand side. It's knocked out. Svitov almost getting away. Svitov has displayed remarkable prowess shorthanded in this first period. He's had a couple of good chances. But a good penalty killer at this period of indication. Torres tried to get it over to Reed and rolled away from him. Penalized player back on, so Canada 0 for 3 on the power play. That was Bomeister who'd moved in from the point. He was the intended receiver of that pass. Svitov up along the board, being contained there by Hamhus. Russians on a change, the reinforcements out there buzzing around. Kovalchuk, one of them, he has the puck and fires a wrist shot. Will that stop that? And the pass going astray. Shastin got it back to the blue line and it rolls all the way down. Spitov showed his size and his strength along the boards with that puck. He did indeed, getting the puck loose for Kovalchuk. In over the line, Borobiev moves in. And just like the game yesterday against Finland, Canada really giving up the high slot, allowing players to carry it right in. Dave Morris has just skated right by his man in the high slot. You've got to be very conscious of it. Barovia, nice move, shoots, pull up with the save, rebound. And flipped out of harm's way to Jaspers. At Schultz, Jaspers passed the puck back to him, and Schultz didn't have a stick. Chernov gets it across in front. Chistov after it along the board. Here's Chernov. Chistov sends it out in front. Morissette knocks it away, and the net is dislodged. Good coverage by Morissette. He came right back. Live on TSN, this is the World Junior Hockey Championship from Moscow. How the years, they fly by. Fleeting glimpses, moments. In our lives, gotta hold on to them, catch them while you can. These are the moments, these are the moments. JBC holds the moments of our lives. Canada closes up the round robin portion of the tournament on Sunday with a game against Switzerland. 30 a.m. in the East. On Mark's line out there, they're the big line. They had a much better first few shifts in this game than they did yesterday against the Finns. Switzerland winning their game earlier today against Belarus. They tied the Russians in their opener. They have looked very impressive. That program has come a long way in the last decade. A lot of money poured into it by the Swiss. Lundmark, top of the slot, backhand shot. And that one trickling through, and Medvedev, Medvedev hangs on to it after Lundmark with a nice foray. His goaltender, he's 5'11", 211 pounds. He plays for Spartak Moscow, but he hasn't really been tested a great deal yet by Canada. A tilt right here. He got down very early, but yet he was able to focus in on that puck, even though he had some traffic coming through his crease.
Three minutes and 31 seconds to go in the opening period. And Zygaman is coming out. This fell off Heatley. And play whistle down. Somebody kicked the puck, so they will line up and do it over again. Puck hasn't been dropped as quickly on faceoffs as it has the last couple of games today. And Heatley's all right. Must have needed some equipment adjustment. Bertoline gets it up ahead. Mortov shoots just wide. Mark rolling around in the slot. Gets tapped up ahead, and here comes Heatley. Lundmark over to his right. Camilleri, the trailer, coming up, but the pass went off the skate. Jacqueline waiting for his mate to get onside and firing it in deep. Lachenkov works it up along the boards. Tapped ahead. Duma. In over the blue line, looking across. Muratov is with him. Duma, great strike, gets it loose in front. Puck fired, point blank. Bordeline with the chance, and it just went skittering wide, and now that one through the crease. Duma going after it in the corner. Number nine, gets it to Muratov. Didn't geek his way by Lundmark, but now he's got it. And it's swept back into the corner by Hanhuis. Muratov trying to get it out in front. We'll let you can see him there. Picking his stick up carefully, he's got it back now. He couldn't pick his stick up without taking his eyes off that puck. And he needed to watch where that puck was at all times. He did a great job of doing it as well. Well, that leaves it there for Bomeister. Kovalchuk up there to intercept. He bounces off of Bomeister. Here comes Spezza. Ah, breaking down the left side. He's open. Spezza finds him. Oh! Great chance, rebound at the side of the goal. That was McCarthy, the trailer, who had the second chance after Ott just missed. Kovalchuk coming back, dipping and diving in over the blue line. Dropped it back for Svitov, shoots. That one comes up around the boards. Soliana with a shot, knocked down. Loose there at the side. Shostin had the chance and it's covered up. Great chances at both ends. Well, we've been pleasantly surprised here. So much for a trapping game by the Russians. This has been some end-to-end -end action. Good chances by both teams, but Spezza, after the Russians had had good chances, ended up feeding Ott perfectly. What a great pass right across to Ott. Jason Spezza got his head up. He saw, first of all, that he had to make the move past the first defender, and then he saw that Steve Ott was doing exactly what he had to do, and that was get to the net. Roulette has made some big saves. And that's just another one of his big saves today. He has been everything that Team Canada hoped that he would be in this tournament so far. Offsetting penalties, Ott in the penalty box for Canada and Kovalchuk for the Russians. And with all due respect to Ott, Canada will take that trade off anytime. Here comes Nick Schultz. Ott gets called for roughing, Kovalchuk the same. Offsetting penalties. Boys, a little pocket picking there. Tried to work his way into the slot, but was crowded out. Svitov fires one. Pardon me, that was Vorobiev who let the shot go, and Willette hangs onto it. Vorobiev cruising in and bumping the goalie after the whistle. And you don't want to allow Vorobiev to get the puck in that slot either, because he's one of their sharpshooters on this team. He's a real goal scorer. He pays the price to score, in fact. He was Chicago's first round draft pick, 11th overall. And when he ends up getting a shot from the slot, look out. Faceoff comes back outside the blue line. And here's Jackman. And Hughes. Carries it in deep, being squeezed there by Korneyev. Puck comes out there in front for Reed. And that may have glanced off the post. Brandon Reed had been left all alone. He had all types of time there. Here comes Jackman. And that one flutters into the glove of Medvedev, and he holds on to it. You know, a lot of people thought that the Russians on four-on-four -four situations would have the advantage, and the Canada should back off from that. Doesn't look like it out there. Peter Borobiev, the Russian coach, is probably thinking exactly the same thing. I thought Canada reacted very well to that extra space out there. 
And I still can't believe that Brandon Reed was left all alone in front of the net for that length of time by the Russians. Backhand shot by Jacqueline, rebound. Knocked away. Spitov trying to get it out. McCarthy centers it in front. And in tight and taking a beating there was one mark. The Russians are breaking down defensively here. Good news for Canada. Here's one mark. Looking for Heatley. Oh, what a great chance for McCarthy. Five seconds to go in the period. McCarthy gets it back out. Bollmeister works it over. Heatley ripped one right on goal. A bullet right into the chest of Medvedev as the period comes to an end. A great way for Canada to end the first period of play. They really had heads up play. They were getting into the front of the net to get scoring opportunities for the first time. 0-0 zero, zero the score after one. This one has everything you expect in a game between Canada and Russia. Great scoring chances, solid goaltending, and lots of intensity. the power of three, the Intel Pentium 3 processor. trucks on the highway is not an option. So why would a V6 engine be one? Malibu from Chevrolet. Powerful V6 engine standard. Think about it. Malibu did. People have stuff. It's not an option. So we built a car with an enormous trunk and extra interior space. Malibu from Chevrolet. Designed for people and their stuff. Think about it. Malibu did. My hat's pink, my curtain shoes are pink, and my phone is pink. My favorite color is pink. My name is Shorty Jenkins, and I make ice. Dave, you want to take the hands and start to First thing do I ask somebody where the closest Tim Hortons is. When he's in town, he's in here every morning, early. Well, I flood the ice, and then I go to Tim Hortons. And then I come back, flood the ice, and then I go back to Tim Hortons. Next two hours, double-double, please. I go back and forth all day long. It's the best coffee I've ever had. Shorty's Ice is uh, by far the best ice in Canada, probably in the world. Really? The yes. cha-cha? Yes. Fox Trot. Fox Trot. And I also like to dance. She's dancing. Everybody else but me, and I'm very upset. <laughs> this is where I'm most comfortable, right here, making my hot coffee. <laughs> it's it good? It really instantly warms up my hands. <laughs> if there's a Tim Hortons down, I'll guarantee you, you're going to have good ice. At the intermission, brought to you by the Pentium 3 processor. Visit us today at intel.ca. My favorite hockey play would be uh, Ray Bork, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, you know, growing up, I've always always liked the way he played. He's always been, you know, all right in the middle of things. Uh, a great leader for his team and, and solid two-way defenseman. I think the most memorable hockey moment would be uh, playing junior B as, as a 15-year-old. Uh, I got to play with uh, you know guys that were you know four or five years older than me, and, and that was probably the year I learned a lot about hockey, uh, you know, about the physical play, and, and uh, you know about the business of hockey. My role model, uh, I, I think, would be my mom. Uh, she's always been behind me, 100%. Uh, you know, ever since I started playing hockey. And, and she's always let me made, make my own decisions, and, and no matter what the, what I did, she was always there to you know either encourage me or uh, you know keep me going in the right direction. 
Big hockey year for Barrett Jackman, the first round pick of the St. Louis Blues, playing in the World Junior for the second straight year, and his Regina Pats are the host team for the Memorial Cup this year. What a breathtaking first period between Canada and Russia. And uh, Ilya Kovalchuk, we talked about him off the top of the show, was potentially the first player to go in the NHL draft. Skill, skill, and skill. Blinding speed, picks up the puck at his own end. Steve Ott gets caught flat footed, and right down the middle. Great save by Maxime Ouellette. As advertised, Kovalchuk comes up with all sorts of speed, and we're seeing that, for, obviously, from all the Russian players. But also, we're seeing an awful lot of skill from this Canadian team, whether it's Lundmark, Heatley, Camilleri, Spezza, Boyce. There have been a lot of nifty moves with the pucks and a lot of really nice plays. All right, and uh, let's talk about uh, Jason Spezza. We talked about him and Kovalchuk going head-to-head. -head. A nifty pass by Spezza and an opportunity turned away by the Russians. Well, the first thing you'll notice about this is the speed. Not as fast as Kovalchuk, but look at the reach and look at the vision to be able to make that backhand pass after shifting from forehand to backhand, thread the needle through a defenseman, get the puck over to his Windsor Spitfire teammate Steve Ott for a great scoring opportunity. Jason Spezza realizes the scouts are all there. There are a lot of National Hockey League general managers there. They're all there. And uh, he knows full well that in a survey that TSN did earlier this year, seven out of ten scouts surveyed picked Kovalchuk as number one. So Spezza feels he's got something to prove, and with plays like that, he'll make things interesting. And uh, also, uh, the best news from that first period, the Russians did not sit back a wild end-to-end -end period, but it is scoreless thus far. When we come back, the other scores and news from this day four of the 2001 World Junior. Get together packs, you get 12 Canadian 12 Cruise Light and one of four great warm up gear items. Hi, Chris. Hey, Bernice. Must be the good drinking age, no purchase necessary. store has a stunning collection of jewelry for just $99. A classic diamond heart pendant. A brilliant diamond cluster ring. Exquisite round diamond stud earrings. And more. Each just $99. The best gift you'll receive this year will be the expression on her face. At People's, the diamond store. transmission. The 300 horsepower GMC Sierra Heavy Duty is the most powerful diesel pickup ever. It's a bit of a fixer-upper. The all-new GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. My hockey hero is Steve Eisenman. I find he's, uh, I like to play like him. He's a, he's a leader and he, uh, he plays every, every sense of uh, hockey. My most memorable hockey moment would probably be uh, last year playing for the World Juniors. Um, it was the greatest experience I had, and it uh, helped me a lot in my hockey career. The biggest influence in my life would probably be my parents. My parents have always stuck by me whatever decision I want to make, and uh, you know I thank them for that. Be sure to log on to the official website of the Canadian Hockey Association and Team Canada at the World Junior. 
www.canadianhockey.ca has in-depth information on Team Canada's players with profiles, chat rooms, behind-the-scenes photos and contests. It's also where you can send emails to the Canadian players. CanadianHockey.ca, the official site of Team Canada. Teams combined for 23 shots in that opening period in a wild end-to-end -end first. For more from Moscow, back to Paul Romanuk and Gary Green. All right, now, the first question I have for you is where was that trapping game that we all expected from the Russians in the first period? You know, everybody's been talking about that for the last few days, about how the Russians were going to play Canada, just the same way that they played the Czech Republic in last year's gold medal. And that's exactly the way, in fact, that the Russian coaches had his team practicing the last couple of weeks. But they must be doing this for pride. But I'll tell you what, folks, that was a great period of hockey. And some of the National Hockey League scouts who want to see the skill level of these kids just finished telling me that that was the best period of hockey they've seen any place in the world this year. That was tremendous, and I just hope they can keep it up for the next couple of periods. Oh, it shouldn't surprise you either. Uh, Gore Miller, I think, was saying a little bit earlier on, the last four times these two teams have met at the World Juniors, has been decided by one goal. Two of those four games have gone into overtime. Second period coming up, Gordon. All right, thanks, Paul. Elsewhere in the World Junior on this day, four, Switzerland beats Belarus by a score of 3-1. to one. Uh, Belarus, obviously one of the weak sisters of this tournament, has been outscored 24-2 to two in three games thus far and was outshot 47-6 to six by the Russians. Now, also going on today, the Czech Republic leading the United States by a count of one to nothing, Vatslav Nedaros, the first round pick of the Colorado Avalanche, has scored the goal for the Czechs. This is the battle of the undefeated teams from the A group. And a surprise, after one period, Kazakhstan leads Sweden one to nothing. The story for Sweden in this World Junior Tournament, no more Sedins and never any goaltending. Uh, Kazakhstan trying to pull the upset of the tournament thus far. When we come back, the second period between Russia and Canada in the 2001 World Junior Championship in just a moment. Introducing the Chevrolet Impala. The comfort of a roomy six-seat interior. The security of a five-star frontal safety rating the performance of a V6 engine, and the dependability of a Chevrolet. All for under $25,000 or get 0.9% purchase financing up to 48 months. The pleasure's back with the Chevrolet Impala. For Buckley's cough mixture, Mr. Frank Buckley. I'm afraid Buckley's mixture tastes every bit as awful as people say it does. On the bright side, you won't have to take it for long. Kyle, I want Joseph. Will you move him? I'm listening. Hang on, I got another call. Yeah? I just got yogurt. And I'll consider moving him. Yogurt? That could be interesting. Collect McDonald's NHL Hockey Cards, featuring today's hottest players. This year with three awesome subsets. A three-card pack, just 89 cents plus tax when you buy any size fries. Okay, Kyle. Let's talk Joseph. I just traded him for Allison Flynn's phone number. Intel Pentium 3 processor. Are you challenging me, Mr. Wallace? It is a melancholy truth. Dickens. You will hear the pippling. Come on, Professor. Get out. out. God, you're such a good kid. They always let you get so far before they take everything away from you. This holiday season, a kid with a gift will find the one person who can give him a chance. Perhaps you'll find a way to amaze even me. From the director of Goodwill Hunting. You're the man now, dog. Finding Forrester. Now playing in select cities starts January 12th everywhere. First period summary brought to you by Gatorade. Is it in you? No scoring in that period. Canada outshot the Russians 14 to 9. A terrific opening period. Now for the second. Back to Moscow with Paul and Gary.
0-0, second period on deck. You're watching the World Junior Championship on TSN. For over 20 years, Air Canada has sponsored Canadian hockey. From world championships to five regional midget events and the national final, the Air Canada Cup. Each year, Air Canada is pleased to present scholarships to the top players at these tournaments. Air Canada, premier sponsor of the CHA. Shots on goal, 14-9 in that first period. Russia outshooting Canada. And they do not keep a, an official scoring chances stat. Still four on four hockey here, which Canada excelled at in the last bit of the first period. Yeah, the dying moments, it was a great flurry out there from the Heatley Lundmark Camilleri line. Lundmark after him. And trying to get away from Shenkov. Teams back to five on five. Kovacek looking for it along the boards with Duma. Knocked away. Boshenkov clears it up for Duma. Muratov is with him. And he gets smothered there by Bolmeister, who clears it up to Reed. Denisov knocked down. Puck comes loose out there in front. Zipped on goal by Reed. Good little burst of speed. You see that shiftiness of his. Back the other way. Muratov coming in. Slams on the brakes, looking for a bit of help. And back checking was Boyd's. Knocks it up ahead. Here comes Reed. He'll turn it on. Drops it off there. And offside is called on uh, Canada. Between the boards in the first period, brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's a Canadian game. Scoring chances unofficially 7 5 favoring Canada. We'll look at the faceoffs, and it's an area that we continue to talk about in the World Junior Tournament. Canada continues to excel when it comes to the faceoff department against almost any team that they have played against over the last decade. And Kovalchuk right there on the doorstep, giving Willett a little bit of a spray. And takes some pushing and shoving for that. I wonder what Stan Butler thought of that great burst of speed by Kovalchuk in that first period of play when he broke right down the middle. Stan Butler knows one thing. He better not see that happen again. The defense will have to be very conscious of the way Kovalchuk will use his confidence and his speed and his strength to do exactly that. Puck bounced up. Torres in after it. Boys in front. He was poised, and that worked perfectly. Everything that is, except the end result. Boys one-timed it, and it pinged off the goalpost. He had Medvedev beat. Give Canada lots of credit in this. The first half of the first period, they were having great difficulties. The Russians were playing so well defensively in their own end. But Canada has started to find ways to get that puck to the open man. Right here is a good example. Boys just teed it up as soon as he got it and let her go. Canada are finding the open man in good scoring positions. Finding the open man, and many times the open man is getting rid of it quickly. Schultz sends it up for Jaspers. McKenzie out there for Morissette, angling through traffic. He was bumped there by Gryapskov. He's stopped, clearing it out. Here's Popovic. Schultz. Go! Clearing it in, no icing on the play. Kunov clears it up around the board. She's stopped looking for it. She's stopped taking out his own man. Grabshkov after it, sends it along the boards and down the ice. Well, that makes four hits the Russians have had in that one shift then by McKenzie's. Three by McKenzie's line and one by their own player. Peter Vorobiev standing in front of his team, as is the custom for Russian coaches. I wonder if it's real pride in the Russian skill level that has changed Peter Vorobiev's mind, wanting to show Canada they are very skillful. Here's Stoll. Gets it to Spezza. Works it out in front. Ah, was in too much traffic to get a shot on goal, and then Spezza with the desperation attempt, shooting it wide. And it's not as if Canada doesn't know the Russians are extremely good skill-wise, but what they didn't know was that they would play this strong offensively and really force the, the play. Stoll heading up there after it, odd in there with him. Spencer comes up, he throws his weight into Sherman. 
In over the line. Shibata can shot. Well, that's stopping that one. Here comes Spezza. Had a good hit a moment ago on this ship. Now he has a good pass. All point blank score with a chance. Out in the rebound. That puck is still loose. Here's Ott. Threw it back towards the line, but Hughes wasn't up at the line to keep it in. Reeling and dealing, Moritov. In over the blue line, drops it back. Yakuba passes it over. Lachenko. Skate. Now the argument is whether or not it was kicked. And they do not have the benefit of a replay here in international hockey. They don't go upstairs to look at goals. Well, we'll get an opportunity to take a look at it, though, folks. There's the shot. Now watch as Ouellette came across. You see that puck go in the net. That, that's a good goal. Yeah. He didn't kick the puck in at all. It went right in off the side of his skate. Alexander Boutorlin will get credit for it. Montreal Canadiens draft pick back in 1999. Well, you can't blame Roulette on that one. A redirection coming off of a skate blade. Canada is just going to have to fight back that much harder right now. They've had good scoring opportunities in the last 10 minutes. They've got to capitalize on Jason Spezza. Set up, up and score perfectly just a minute ago. They've got to start finishing off. Boutoulin gets credit for the goal. And it comes at 3.33. Really just an unfortunate bounce for Canada. If the player intended to direct it into the goal like that, then uh, that's, that's a lot of skill. Bottom line is it's a 1-0 lead for Russia. We're back in a moment. We love to see you smile. When you see some of the outrageous values here at McDonald's, you just won't be able to hide your smile. McDonald's has a big taste you're going to love. Our big beefy burger, the big extra. Thick sliced tomato, fresh lettuce and seasoning too. It's a taste you'll love again and again. It's the big extra, and it's now an amazing price. Just $1.49 every day. We love to see you smile. The big extra, just $1.49 every day. Canada trailing one to nothing. And Kovalchuk battling along the boards. What a battle with McCarthy. A couple of top players. One playing in the NHL and one who will. Svitov gets it up along the boards and here comes Kovalchuk, or so he thought. Camilleri back in for Canada, looking for Heatley. Plays it up towards him, a penalty coming up in the play. It is going to go against Russia, so Canada will have another chance in the power play. Camilleri. Trying to work it out in front, and back there to intercept the pass was Spitov. And that draws the whistle. It's a high-sticking call against Russia, and Canada will have its fourth power play opportunity of the game. Igor Shastin is picking up the penalty. His coach isn't too happy with it. He could have maybe even picked up a double penalty. He gets the first one right here. As you can see, that stick was up, but then once he knew he had the penalty, he actually came right out at the point. He could have been charged for roughing or charging. Buck comes back. And Hughes moves it up. Here's Heatley. Looks. Powers one on goal. Rebound in front. Lundmark was scrambling after it. So too was Camilleri. But the puck cleared down the ice. 143 to go on the power play for Canada. They have had three shots on goal and three power plays so far in this game. Pass up ahead. Chapman tried to send it across for Camilleri, being held up as he tried to move towards the slot. Now Lundmark had his pocket picked. And Nebraev getting it out to center. 
Kuna is listening it in. You were absolutely right, Paul. Camilleri couldn't get loose. He could not go to the net because he was being interfered with all the way, being held. It was Barkunov who was draped over him like a coat. Offside called on Canada with 103 to go on the power play for the Canadians. Well, Lundmark, Heatley, and Camarelli have really played well today. I think that this line has the capabilities without any question of opening this thing up a little bit for Canada. They just need to finish off. They've had the scoring opportunities. Danny Heatley has really taken matters into his own hands at times today. They wanted to have a big comeback after yesterday. Tough to tell with all the equipment on, but when you see Danny in a t-shirt, you can see that he's bulked up. He's added about 10 pounds since last year. McCarthy zips it up for Reed. Lots of traffic in front. Pass came across for Torres, and he couldn't get his stick untangled to negotiate contact. Here's McCarthy with a wrist shot. That hit a skate. Now Torres looking, passing. Bullmeister shooting, and that was blocked. I believe Cornea have got a piece of it, and it goes up over the glass and out of play with 29 seconds to go on the power play. Well, they didn't get the shot on that that time. Bullmeister tried, but it was blocked. However, Canada have been more successful as of late of getting that puck through to Medved. Reed on the faceoff against Svitov. Oh! Torres in there to claim the spoils. Now here's Boyd. Try to work it back out. And Svitov jumping up there after it. He has been dangerous shorthanded. Kovalchuk with it now. Kovalchuk and Svitov out there as the forwards penalty killing for Russia. How's that for potency? But here comes Reed. How's that for speed? Gets it in front of the net. And it's not going. Kovalchuk will come back with Svitov. Three on two. Puck drop back. Justine with a shot. And Willette was there with the save. Here comes Torres in over the blue line. Looking for boys. And he finds him in the corner. Skating back, no icing. Great pace to this game. We're coming up in the seven-minute mark of the second period, and Canada is trailing Russia one to nothing. Live on TSN from Moscow, it's the World Junior Hockey Championship. Gatorade wants you to be a player. Go online and play Gatorade Game Day Hockey. Log on at GatoradeCanada.com. Pick your weekly games and your favorite players. Then sit back and cheer on your team. All entries are entered for a chance to win a Star Choice elliptical satellite dish and a receiver with three months platinum programming and free installation or weekly Gatorade prize packages. Be a player and get into the game with Gatorade Game Day Hockey. Brought to you by Gatorade, the official sports drink of the NHLPA. Puck bouncing around there, picked up by Nick Schultz. Sends it up for Jaspers. Schultz being hounded there along the boards. McKenzie back there trying to help out. Comes up for Jaspers. He couldn't get a hold of it. Backhanded in there by Griachikov. And a Russian player down on the ice. And play whistle down. I don't believe there's going to be a penalty. There has been a whistle. It's tough to hear because so many of the fans whistle. I didn't see Pavel Borobiev get hit by anybody. Well, maybe I was wrong, but all of a sudden he just kind of went flying through the air and rolled. Did a Canadian player get him? Let's watch right from the bottom of the screen and see what happened here. I don't think so. I mean, Schultz put the stick on him, but just to put it up there to try to make him go through it. Borobiev, 11th overall pick to Chicago in the 2000 draft. I think Borobiev was doing nothing more than diving, looking for the opportunity for a power play. McKenzie, long shot. Bangs in off the glass, up around for Morissette. Back up for McKenzie. It was about ear high, though, so he wasn't able to knock it down. Jackman moves it in deep. McKenzie going after it. Trying to stay away from Schaefer. Here's Morissette. Yeah, Kubov watching him. Puck bounced in there, and Medvedev is going to hang on to it. McKenzie's line's really enjoying this here today. They're playing more like North American hockey. Stan Butler puts this line out, and away they go. If you want to check out 
comments from Stan, you can do it daily on the CanadianHockey.ca website. Check out the Stan Butler Daily Diary. He liked what McKenzie's line did for the team yesterday, and he's got to be liking what they're doing again here today. Spezza had to race in there quickly. They just dropped the puck. The Russians weren't even ready. They have picked that up a little bit, that aspect of the way the game's being officiated here in the second period. Yeah, the first period, we were surprised, both Paul and I, the fact that it wasn't being you know, called the same way that it was in the first couple of games. The last game we did, the game yesterday against Finland, took less than two hours of clock time to play. You compare that to your average NHL game. The face-offs from stoppage of play to the drop of the puck were anywhere from 14 to 18 seconds. Oshenko, saucering that one to the line, knocked down, Hemhues fires one. The puck was still flipping on him, so he didn't get a great shot away. Look at Ott throwing his weight around in there. Cycles it to Spencer. in front, big chance, and it was fired just wide by Stoll. Medvedev may have gotten a piece of that, but what a chance. Here's Ott, trying to get it out in front for Stoll again, and then Ott was upended. He was just out muscle. Oshenkov knocked him down. Here's Jackman. Up along the boards, Oshenkov clears it back in. You think back to the first period, this, jet, this line could have had three goals. Shostin coming in, looking. Kovalchuk shoots. Svitov was darting across there in front. Couldn't get his stick on it in time, though. Camilleri for Canada. Looking for one mark. That's picked up. Kovalchuk pounded one, and that was blocked by Jackman. up ahead, Svitov is deflecting it in, and Willette is going to settle things down and hang on to it. Well, I just pointed it out. Jason Spezza has set up Stoll and Ott in this game three times like if they hadn't been able to bury it. And that was just one of the three times. Jason Spezza, who we've talked about, has great vision, great creativity. What a backhand pass that was right out to Stoll. That was the hockey equivalent of the basketball no look. Eyes <laughs> in the back of the head. Play a little scrambly here along the boards. Ryabshikov plays it back. Borkunov. Cross up ahead. She's tied. Coming in, looking for a bit of help. He was at a sharp angle, and the help had not arrived, apparently. Vorobiev was in front. Nikriyev. Gets it in over the line. Barobia for Nepraya. Knocked away from him, and Canada will come back with Heatley leading the charge. Dancing in over the blue line, but he misstepped and lost the puck. She's tied. Working it up and ahead. Coming in, Barobia with a shot. Willette stared him down that time. Barobia battling after it back of the goal. Nepraya lets it go back to the blue line. Comes over. Voshenko tried to pass it up. I thought he might have just let that one rip. Across. Schaefer with a shot. That was knocked down. Nepraev back out. Ruskov with a shot. And finally, Canada relieving the pressure. They needed to get a change, and they will have ample opportunity to do so with the icing call. A little bit of confusion there in Canada's end as to who is covering the point. The Russians starting to move the puck around well, but some of that was because Canada, you could see them, folks, they were all grouped up over at this area, and no one was up here looking for the point man. Long pass up ahead for Reed. He was in full flight. He drops it back. The puck drilled on goal there. That was Rafi Torres following things up. Here's Reed. Chernow. Good hit, sure center ice hit. Right back up into the play, though. And so is Reed. He plays it up ahead for Torres. Clearing the puck in. Boys moving up after it. He takes the body, bumping there with Schaefer. These two teams really mixing it up, and it's Boys coming away with that puck. Couldn't get it in front. Too bad for Canada because he had McKenzie moving right into position. This is Schultz. Drops it back for McKenzie. Coming up on 12 minutes of this second period. Canada trails Russia, one to nothing. Zygomanis barging right across. Zygomanis looking for it down in the corner. Jasper's up there, working with him, centers it in front of the net. And right there was McKenzie. Back out, Ruffolin gets it.
gets it in over the blue line. Jasper is trying to sneak in behind the defense. Jackman electing not to pull the trigger on the long pass that time. In over the line. Bordelin looking in front. Boshenkov was there with him. And Wallet down there to intercept the pass and smother it. Great scoring chances and great hitting. Reed, look out. Nothing. Russia leading. Alexander Boutelin with the goal for the Russians in this second period. Go! Draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens. Boehm Easter gets it into the corner for Spezza. Spins away from the check. Spezza, great strength there to get it to the front of the goal. And Ott was there as well as Stoll. Spezza playing at the best game I've ever seen him play in the World Juniors. His playmaking skills have really excelled in this game. Here's Stoll. Saucers it off for Ott. Looking for Spezza. Gets it back to Stoll. Spezza lurking high in the slot. Stoll and Ott trying to coax that puck loose. Now here's Ott with it. Looking. Tried to pass it out. And it wobbles around there at the side. Ott stepping right in. He loves to do that. He is an agitator. They call him the Rat. And not the most original of nicknames, but... It pertains particularly to his style of play. He likes to get in there and mix things up. Yeah, high energy in your face. Rattle some guys. Yesterday, in the pregame warm-up, he went out and talked to Finland's best player. Was in his face even before the game started. That's the way Ott likes to play. But I've been impressed by the number of chances that Canada have been able to create. They have been going to the net. They have had heads-up plays. Good short passes. Their passing has improved immensely since the first 10 minutes of this hockey game. Ott had never played for Canada in an international competition prior to this tournament. But what a debut. And I think he's probably quite pleased to be the most disliked player in all of the Ontario Hockey League. Offsetting penalties. Heatley off for Canada. And heading off for the Russians, Alexander Sulyanov. Well, so far in this hockey game, 4-4 four four has favored Canada. We'll see what happens here. Canada were able to find room in behind the defense of the Russians. Well, me, it is Heatley in the penalty box, isn't it? Because they put five up on the scoreboard. Penalty box on the opposite side from where we are. And indeed it is Heatley. I can see Han Hughes on the bench. up there to Lundmark. Tiptoes in over the line. Tried to step towards the slot and lost possession of it for Robiev. Great team coming out for Russia. Knocked away from him. Camilleri up towards the corner. Kuna sends it up around the boards and out. And a race for that puck for Robiev. Trying to get to it. And Popovic not letting him get out of his vision. Or reach. Here's Popovic with it starting back. Bring this puck in around the boards. Lundmark moving up after it. And play whistle down. A penalty coming up. And it was away from the play. It looks as though Popovic is going to go to the box. It's a cross-checking call. So Russia will go on a four-on-three advantage. Well, for as much as Canada have excelled at killing penalties, there's a little bit too much room out there for their comfort level against this Russian team. Reed out there to take the face off for Canada. It is a four on three for the next minute, and then it'll be a five on four advantage for the Russians. Moritov stopped up there at the blue line. Rubelin works it over. 
Poroshenko throws it back. Butolin. Poroshenko works it over. Puck fired right on goal by Kornayev. Kornayev again, number 11. Poroshenko for Kornayev. Let's the shot go. Took in front. Well, that's got it. That shot was sizzling towards the goal off the stick of Vladislav Korneyev. And Ouellette making the save on the tip. And Ouellette was down and he could see it. Bo Meester's big reach out there plays a big part in penalty killing. He went down to try to block the shot, didn't get it. But Maxime Ouellette did. And the puck cleared down the ice. Fifteen seconds to go in the four on three for Russia. Kovalchuk in over the blue line. Back for Denisov, knocked away from him. Jackman sends it up around the boards, but not out. Zhugadayev passing it up. It's now a five on four advantage for the Russians. Barkunov. Sasserin one up towards the corner. Kovalchuk after it. Gets it down low. Puck centered in front. Svitov was there, but he was being marked very closely. Kovalchuk again. Works it across. 28 seconds left in the five on four for the Russians. Barkunov. Shastin. Working it along the boards here. Looking for Barkunov back at the line. Being badgered there. Good job by Jackman. And the puck cleared out. Ten seconds left in the power play. Shostin was looking for Kovalchuk. It's knocked down. Stoll comes in, short-handed, and is content to just pound it up back of that Russian goal. Penalized player back on, so Canada weathering that storm. Here comes Kovalchuk stepping in over the line. And offside, the puck rattled around on him, and that put the play offside. Live on TSN, this is the World Junior Hockey Championship. In the new venture, the third row seat can be stored in the floor. Travel peacefully in a well thought out maxi space. The Chevrolet Venture, tried, tested, and true. Spezza out there in the face off for Canada. Mixing things up a little. Spezza not out there with Ott, his normal line mate. He's on the bench. Ott cleared across towards the front of the net by Nefrayev. Dorobiev after it. She's top. Number 25 after the puck for Russia. Zygamanis clears it ahead. Here comes Spezza. Zygamanis going for the front of the net, but it was picked off. And Dorobiev coming back. And meanwhile, that was... Stoll, who went crashing through into the net. He was going hard for the goal along with Zygamanis. And a penalty coming up against Russia for interference. Alexander Barkunov heading to the box. And he just interfered with Stoll, and that's what created the net off of its mooring. Stoll ended up crashing right into it because of what this man did to him. This will be Canada's fifth power play of the game. No power play and even strength. Canada have definitely had enough opportunities here in this game. Rafi Torres back for Bomeister. Didn't like the angle for a shot. Spezza down in the corner. Reed and Torres, the other two forwards. McCarthy and Bomeister back at the blue line. Spezza drops it down low for Reed. In back of the net, dancing around, trying to get it out in front. Kornayev able to knock it down and a race for it now. Moritov coming in, shorthanded, swinging it. Russia has had a couple of great shorthanded chances in this game. Here's Torres after it. For Spezza. Back to the blue line. Bullmeister. Feathering that puck up to the corner. Here's Reed. McCarthy is open. He's got it. Here's the shot. Oh, he didn't miss by much. 
Spets it along the boards. 103 to go on the power play for Canada. Boom Easter. McCarthy waiting there for it. Spets it looking for that puck. Denisov tying him up. Comes around to Boom Easter. Winds up with a shot. On hit the side of the goal. But comes back out in front of the net. And nobody home for Canada. Everybody up there pressing. And Paolo Duma just steps across center and dumps it down into Canadian territory with 35 oh. seconds to go in the Canadian man advantage. Camilleri, Lundmark, and Heatley up there now for Canada. Zelulianov gets it up around the boards. Trustee able to push it up. And here he comes shorthanded. Svitov is with him. Justine coming in. He's pulled down. And the fans whistling. Looking for the penalty call against Canada. Camilleri with less than a minute to go in the period. Dangling there along the boards. Try to get it to Heatley. Svitov knocked it down. And he will chop it down the ice. Penalized player is back on the team. It's all even up with 45 seconds to go in the period. No shortage of energy on Canada's part. They just need to find some finishing. Coming out carefully, Ham Hughes. Looks it up along the boards, Heatley trying to slither through there, but the puck got away from him. Okuna fires it up ahead. Kovalchuk with a head of steam. Dives his way towards the corner. Gets away from Schultz and then flattens Heatley. Ham Hughes coming back. Ten seconds to go in the period. Lundmark in front of the net. The save of the game for the Russian goalie. Canada should be frustrated. They're not. Because they have had lots of opportunities. And that is just another one. Jaspers went right to the net. Dan Butler asked them to go to the net today more. They've done that without any doubt. And they have done it aggressively. Off the draw. Jaspers trying to get it on goal. And time will run out. And Canada, exactly as they did in the first period, ending with some pressure on the Russian goaltender. Canada outplayed Russia in that second period, Paul. They outplayed them in skill, speed, and hustle, but yet they can't outdo them on the scoreboard, not as of yet. No, nope, they didn't outscore them. It is one to nothing. Russia is leading, but Canada pressing. They've been frustrated and face some pretty good goaltending. The Russians are up, drawing the only blood in this game so far. the power of three, the Intel Pentium 3 processor. Sometimes you look me so highly. You make me feel like a strong man. But now you're looking me over. Cause I'm a man and you know how to watch. Look with moderation. Hypnotic suggestion. Customer information for our sales force on the road in real time. That's it. Before you get your ideas is your business. Helping you make them work is ours. E-Solutions from Microsoft. With the season's best deals, everybody's trading in their old vehicles to take advantage of the General Motors holiday rate break. Everybody. Get 0.9% purchase financing or no payments and no interest for 12 months on most new vehicles. The General Motors Holiday Rate Break for a limited time at your Chevrolet Oldsmobile dealer.
I want Joseph. Will you move him? I'm listening. Hang on, I got another call. Yeah? I just got yogurt. And I'll consider moving him. Yogurt? That could be interesting. Collect McDonald's NHL hockey cards featuring today's hottest players. This year with three awesome subsets. A three card pack, just 89 cents plus tax when you buy any size fries. Okay, Kyle. Let's talk Joseph. I just traded him for Allison Flynn's phone number. At the intermission, brought to you by the Pentium 3 processor. Visit us today at intel.ca. At the draft, for sure, just, you know, your whole family's there. I had about 20 people there, and just just sitting there and seeing, the, you know, the intensity of the crowd and just being, you know, when, when am I going to get picked was the big issue. And, you know, finally to, to hear my name called, you know, the tears started rolling, and, and I'll never forget that moment ever, ever in my life, and it was just the biggest day of my life so far. My first coach was my dad, and, you know, he was, he, he was always strict on me, you know, always, let's go, let's keep going, keep going, keep going, and, you know, I think it, he made me what I am today as a player-wise. He, he, made, he made me compete when I was that little, and, you know, it always drove me to, to try to be the best and I could be, and I think I owe all my hockey career t to my father, for sure, for teaching me all the, the little intangibles, skating, shooting, and just being mentally prepared for each and every game, so I owe that all to my father. Steve Ott, first round pick of the Dallas Stars, just signed a contract with the Dallas uh, before Team Canada's training camp for this World Junior Championship. Jason Spezza expected to go uh, in the very early picks of the upcoming National Hockey League draft. And every time he's been on the ice for Canada, Bob, uh, he's created chances. Jason Spezza has really stepped up his play in this game. We talked a little bit about the skating of Jason Spezza earlier with no look passes like that. The great reach and creativity that he's showing out there. Jason Spezza is finding his teammates. He's creating offense. Jarrett Stahl just misses that one. What I'll be interested to see over the course of the third period is if Stan Butler decides to change his lines around at all. It's clear that Spezza, who was on the third offensive line or arguably the fourth line for Team Canada, is obviously having a great game. Jared Stahl's a good offensive hockey player. So is Steve Ott. They've got the numbers to back it up with Kootenay and Windsor of the Canadian Hockey League, respectively. I'll be interested to see if Stan Butler maybe moves the lines around a little bit and takes somebody like a Brad Boys, who's got 34 goals in 32 games with the Erie Otters, or even maybe tamper with the number one line a little bit and get somebody out there with Spezza, who, when he gets that opportunity, is a pure finisher that has an opportunity to bury it. But it'll be interesting to see what Butler does in the third period. All right, and Canada 0 for 5 thus far on the power play in this game. That, that part of the story and uh, the fact that the Russians taking that many penalties is also a big part of the story. Uh, other scores and more from the 2001 World Junior Hockey Championship right after this. of a lifetime. I know the old man likes you. That don't mean he's gonna sit still for you courting his daughter. Just became. Fishing to get me in trouble. You are in trouble. A fight for their lives. I knew it'd come to this. Don't go down there. Matt Damon. I'm gonna make it right. You make bad trouble for yourself. You start that trouble you never even heard of. All the pretty horses. Now in theaters everywhere. Welcome to my Hall of Fame. Home of the quickest, most awesome player to ever hit the ice. The place where with one unexpected move, I can single-handedly bring thousands to their feet. What's your dream? Join the 
celebration. In 2008, we invite all Canadians to come live the dream and expect the world. I hate Team Photo Day. Yeah, no kidding. Number 16. You guys are late. You take number five, you take number eight. Since 1936, SO has supported hockey. That's why we've created a unique program where you can donate your SO Extra Points towards the purchase of new team sweaters. At SO, we believe... Who wants this one? There's no such thing as an unassisted goal. Time for the TSN Playbook Trivia Question. Who was the leading point getter at the 1991 World Junior Championships in Saskatoon? Doug Waite, Pavel Bure, or Eric Lindros? Stay tuned to this program for the correct answer in play. hockey moment was probably getting drafted at the, in Calgary last year. Uh, I had my family there, uh, you know, my aunt, uh, a couple friends, and you know, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, it was really, uh, it was really just really an exciting time and a great moment. Rome, well, I'll definitely have to be my parents and uh, you know, and my older brothers. Uh, you know, they're definitely uh, people that I look up to and you know, people that are on a track and moving, moving, moving ahead in life. So definitely uh, my family. The official website of the Canadian Hockey Association and Team Canada at the World Junior Championship is CanadianHockey.ca. There's in-depth information on Team Canada's players with profiles, chat rooms, photos and contests. This is also where you can email the Canadian players. CanadianHockey.ca, the official site of Team Canada. Thus far, the Canadians trailing the Russians one to nothing in this day four of the World Junior Hockey Championship in Moscow. With their thoughts so far here are Paul Romanek and Gary Green. So let me get this straight. Uh, Canada really going for the net hard. They've almost scored, but you think maybe they should pull the reins back a little bit? Well, just a few times out there, Paul, because I know these players today, after they were talked to about going to the net more, they want to go to the net, and they've been doing it with great, uh, great drive out there, and they've, their energy levels have been outstanding but what they've got to do at times is read and react a little bit better when you drive to the net sometimes you've always got a checker on you sometimes if you just kind of back off 10 feet away from the net you'll get a better scoring opportunity and i think they'll do that in this third well another thing they're going to have to watch uh, i've noticed it a couple of times uh, in particular alexander svitov outstanding shorthanded just jumping on any canadian mistake and canada's almost been caught a couple of times while they were on the power play gordon all right, thanks, guys. Alexander Bucherlin has the only goal of the game off his skate. The Montreal second-round pick in 99 has the Russians up 1-0. Hey, Gordon. I hate Team Photo Day. Yeah, no kidding. Number 16. You guys are late. You take number 5, you take number 8, right? Since 1936, SO has supported hockey. That's why we've created a unique program where you can donate your SO Extra Points towards the purchase of new team sweaters. At SO, we believe... Who wants this one? There's no such thing as an unassisted goal. Still got him? Yep. The 2001 Cavalier Coupe has 15-inch wheels, a 5-speed Catrag transmission, and is the only car in its class with standard anti-lock brakes. You still got him? <laughs> the Cavalier Coupe, with more standard features than ever and a five-year powertrain warranty. Just $195 a month or 0.9% financing. Helping you make them work is ours. E-Solutions from Microsoft.
welcome to my Hall of Fame. Home of the quickest, most awesome player to ever hit the ice. The place where with one unexpected move, I can single-handedly bring thousands to their feet. What's your dream? Shots even in that second period. Canada's outshot Russia 22-17, but trails 1-0 on the goal by Baturlin. The second period summary brought to you by Cheerios, one of Canada's favorite cereals for over 40 years. Now back to Moscow for the third. Canada in a similar position to the one they faced one year ago against Russia. That is trailing by a goal heading into the third. The ESO Medals and Certificates of Achievement program rewards youngsters across Canada with most dedicated, most sportsmanlike, and most improved player medals and reinforces team commitment with Certificates of Achievement for each member. ESO, premier sponsor of the CHA. In that game last year, it was 2-1 to one heading into the final period. Russia was leading, and in fact, in that game, Danny Heatley scored a goal for Canada. And Brandon Reed's line's going to get the assignment. They get things going early in this third period. Team start the period off at even strength. And zipping up there after it was McCarthy. Not able to keep it in. Bullmeister back. Come in over the blue line. But finally just tapped in. McCarthy back after. McCarthy sliding it up there along the boards. Muratov trying to punch it back in. Away comes Boys for Canada. Steps in over the blue line. Lundmark was with him. Couldn't get it across. Muratov squeezed out just enough. Continues after the puck. Not able to pick it up that time. Denisov back after it. Camilleri up to give him a bump along the board. Heatley moving in on the left side. Here's Heatley now. Camilleri going for the front of the net. There's the pass. Heatley again. Gets a chance and a shot. And it's stopped and covered up by Medvedev. Medvedev goes down early. He goes down and covers the lower part of the net extremely well. Heatley... When he got his opportunity right here, he kind of did the, the quick pivot. He went low, and that's where Medvedev has been able to be very successful. Here's Jackman with a shot. That was knocked away. Camilleri looking for Lundmark. That's Vitov. He's feathering it up off the boards and down the ice. That's an icing call against Russia. Between the boards is brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's a Canadian game. Power plays, both over. And the hit total also favoring Canada. Winning in every department except not yet being able to score. Here comes Shistov. In over the line, he had Vorobiev with him, couldn't get it across. Schultz clears it out. Here comes Ott. Over to Spezza. Shoots. That's blockered away. She's top. Gets it up around the boards. Tapped up ahead. Takes the return feed. She's top. Dipping and diving. And he is pulled down. And that is a penalty. Russia will go in the man advantage. Vorobiev. Up back of the net, crossing off with Shistov, who cuts towards the front. The puck was touched there by Stoll, but there was no whistle. And there should have been. Gryabshev bumped there along the boards and finally play whistle down. And it will be a power play chance coming up for Russia. Jarrett Stoll will park himself for two minutes. Well, Canada were very disciplined in the first couple of periods. They've got to make sure they do that same thing in his third. Stoll was caught flat-footed, and he really had no reason at that point in time to take a penalty. The Russian player wasn't about to walk in all alone and score. You know who Jarrett Stoll reminds me a lot of is from the, the team that was in Winnipeg is Kyle Calder. Same type player. Good two-way player. Very similar. 
And that one fired, and it hopped up into the Canadian bench. So we get a whistle, 156 to go in the Russian power play. Stan Butler was an assistant coach on that team in Winnipeg. And he learned a great deal. And I know that he's talked to other coaches who have coached in the World Junior Championship once he knew he had the assignment. One of the things that he learned was in the selection of the players, when it comes right down to certain players at the end, take guys that you can rely on that you know. You know the program of excellence that features this team is tremendous for past coaches supporting present coaches. Kornayev with a shot. That's knocked away. Muratov gets it back to the blue line. Shinkov moving it up. Comes back out. Kornayev getting it up ahead. Duma slides it down into the corner. Great patience here being exhibited by the Russians. They work it around slowly, very deliberately. Wotillian works it across. Wotillian with a shot. But it just trickled in behind him, and it was chopped in while it was in the crease. To make matters worse, I think that McCarthy might be taking a penalty on this goal as well. There was the shot that just got through Olet into the crease, and then it was pushed in, and then McCarthy gave the Russian player a little working over, and I think that he's getting a penalty for it, folks. I believe number 15, Alexander Boutolin, will get credit for the goal. And in any event, it is now 2-0, Russia on top. And I think you're right with the penalty call, Gary. Stoll comes out of the box, but McCarthy goes in. You were expecting that big shot from the point, and instead, it didn't come. It was a changeup. Well, and it was a change-up that Willett actually got most of, but Buterlin was able to step into the crease. He was unchecked and chopped it into the goal. Now, they're announcing it here in the building as Volchenkov. He's the one who takes the shot. But I don't think so. Look right here. No. That puck wasn't going in. It was Buterlin Until it sure. got help. Exactly. Officially, Volchenkov gets credit. We'll see if they change that. And now McCarthy in the penalty box. Now McKenzie's going to take and a penalty. McKenzie's going to take a penalty, and the wheels starting to get a little wobbly here in the third period for Canada. Well, the Russian player should get a penalty right there for taking the legs right out from underneath the bolet. McKenzie's going to get a penalty for this. But at the other end, once that penalty had already been signaled, Svitov should have also received a penalty for going right into the crease and then taking the feet out from under, under Maxime Ouellet. Well, Svitov, and yet he's not getting one, is he? Svitov fell down in the slot and just kept sliding towards the goal. But then he used his stick yeah. to take the feet out from underneath the Boulet. A two-man advantage for a minute 46 for Russia. And Canada trailing 2-0. Then he saw, takes the pass, drills a shot, rebound, will end with a great save, and I mean great, on Shostin, who was right at his doorstep. Ouellette will bounce right back, he just did. He made a great save right here on a great shot. Not once, but twice. As soon as Shastine got that opportunity, he knew he had to go high with it, he tried to go high with it, but Ouellette just took it right away from him. Ouellette's got tremendous focus. You could see it on that play there, the patience that he displayed, waiting to see where Shastine was going to try to put it. And then he beat him. And fired across. Shastine was the intended receiver. Just off the edge of the crease. He's got the puck now. Moving in. Works it back. Korneyev. Being watched by Reed. Here's Korneyev. Shastine. For Korneyev. So you and I, 
Gets it back, fired by Korneyev. And that was deflected up off the glass. Two-man advantage for Russia, and Jaspers will get it down the ice and relieve the pressure temporarily. Korneyev's not a very big guy at 5'9", 178 pounds, but he's got a good, hard, low shot from the point. Boshenkov moving it up ahead. Kovalchuk fighting his way in over the blue line. He'll set the table here, drops it back. Kudalin. So you know. And that is knocked down by Jared Stoll. Can he get it out? Yes, he can that time. And there are 20 seconds remaining in the two-man advantage. Duma working his way in. Drops it back. Wasenka moved it up, and it was just ripped wide of the goal. Justine let it rip. Here comes Muratov. On the move and over the blue line. And in four seconds, Canada right on the verge here of a big kill. And now a penalty coming up. And we'll see who draws the high-sticking penalty here. Looks like it will go against Russia. the TSN Playbook Trivia question. Who is the leading point getter at the 1991 World Junior Championships in Saskatoon? The answer, Doug Waite. Hit tsn.ca slash playbook for contest details and play. Buterlein got the high sticking penalty. It was a retaliation penalty. Brandon Reed actually got his stick up earlier, but he didn't get caught. So Canada now on the power play and needing a goal desperately. I apologize for the understatement. A down 2 nothing with less than 15 minutes to play in this third period. Lundmark going up after it. Lundmark, Camilleri and Heatley out there for Canada. McCarthy working hard up in the corner. Gets it across in front. The pass was a little high, and Heatley couldn't knock it down. Jackman there to save it and keep it in. Here's McCarthy. Lundmark was open in the slot. Now Camilleri jamming in front. And the puck cleared. Nobody can find it. Way up and into the stands. <laughs> nobody, nobody knows where it went for sure. Did you see it? Yeah, it, it came up actually towards us over top of the Canadian bench and dropped into the stand. <laughs> Some of the players were even looking in their equipment and their sweater. Where is it? Well, well, Ulet was looking for it. Another guy who was looking was Svitov, who was open in the neutral zone had that puck come down. Yeah, he was one that was hoping that it was in his sweater. Greatest goaltender in the history of Soviet Russian hockey, Trechiak, taking in the game. And that puck fired up over the glass and out of play. And actually, Tretiak watching this game and enjoying it, I'm sure, but he's not getting an opportunity to see Alex Ald, who's one of his students. Alex Ald, the backup goaltender for Team Canada, goes to Tretiak's goaltending school every single summer. Here's Jackman. Works it up ahead. Boyd shoots. And Boyd scores! shot well Canada after they killed the penalty kind of got things going again they got the momentum back and McCarthy who has been a great leader on this hockey club was right in on top you could see that Torres was in there McCarthy came in and was bound and determined he was going to find for the first time in this hockey game some room behind the Russian goaltender Medvedev McCarthy gets the goal at 6-12 on the power play for Canada. Boys took the initial shot, and McCarthy, as he does so well, anticipated and jumped up into the play to cash in in the rebound. Here comes Morobia, back in for the Russians. Battles his way up there to the corner. Efreyev along the boards, put Camilleri down. 
Yaprayev clears it in. Popovic into the corner. Didn't take his man out. He's tough. Gets it out in front. Puck rolling down. Borobiev looking for it. What a great save by Ouellette. He just stood there and made sure that he had the angle. Offside. With Heatley and Camilleri trying to come in. Well, meanwhile, Lundmark just got put down. Nipraev, the leading scorer, put him down. Let's go back and take a look at that goal, and you can see McCarthy right in almost on top of the crease, but he had a little bit of room. He just kind of smacked that puck, and it finally found its way into the net. There's Jacklin clearing it in. Moritov getting it out. And he will stick handle there towards center, knocked away from him. Zigomanis got a little crossed up. Jackman trying to feed Zigomanis. Here's Muratov. Turning and starting back in. Duma is with him. Trying to send it across there for Duma. Buterlin also in the neighborhood, number 15. There's Duma. Given a stiff there by Ott. And the puck cleared down the ice. It is an icing call on Canada. Canada down by a goal. Lots of time to play. Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy-duty pickup you can get. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. Hope you can join us Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, Canada and Switzerland. The final game of the round robin for Canada. And then it's the crossover game, start of the quarterfinals. Here's Jaspers coming up. On the way in with Morissette. He was darting through the slot. Offside is called. Here's Gordon Miller. All right, thanks very much, Paul. Uh, some score updates for you. The Czech Republic has blown it open against the United States. They're up 4-1 in the third. Sweden now leads Kazakhstan 5-2 after trailing that game 1-0 in the first. Switzerland beat Belarus 3-1 earlier today. Thanks, Gord. Switzerland a real surprise in this tournament. Canada will get a first-hand look at them on Sunday. And it won't be easy because this Swiss team is talented. they got decent size. They're very disciplined in their style of play. This is Morissette. Back for McCarthy, who clears it up. McCarthy, the goal scorer for Canada, and he'll lead this rush up through the neutral zone. Long shot, punches it in, chest high, grabbed there by Medvedev, and he elects to hold on with Morissette cruising in there looking for a loose puck. Well, McCarthy, he has just got that look in his eye that he wants to win this hockey game oh so badly. He was very upset after the tie in yesterday's game against Finland. It was noticeably so on the ice and then off the ice afterwards. A great attitude and the undisputed leader of this team. And that's saying something because the majority of guys on this team back with their club teams are either assistant captains or captains. So leadership is is at a premium with this and he's a team. He's a really good leader. He praises other people. And when I talked to his mom, Maureen, she said, you know, he's such an easygoing guy off the ice. But when he's on the ice, I sometimes say, who is that guy anyway? Bryachkov clears it up. Another call. Nike Skills Development Camps encourage minor hockey players to improve their fundamental skills of the game. Program coaching manuals provide easy, progressive techniques to teach our next generation of great players. Nike, premier sponsor of the CHA. That was an icing call on Canada. Wasn't sure initially whether it was offside or icing. And Nick Schultz will start things off. Long pass 
steps up ahead. Reed almost sneaking in. He was just offside, but he had the angle for sure on Denny Agriabshikov. The Russians are starting to play now like we expected them to play right from the very start, but they're defending that one goal lead that they have. You can see how they're laying back right now, and Canada are trying to use that long pass. But it's being cut down. And they're going to have a difficult time doing it if, in fact, the Russians lay back and trap. Jackman bouncing it down into Russian territory. Coming up in the halfway point of this third period. Yakubov playing it up ahead. That was Chernov darting into the opening but couldn't contain the pass. Schaefer. Long pass up ahead. And Hughes gets it to Spezza. He's by himself. A one on four, and those don't often work out. That was no exception. Razakov was coming right across the ice in order to try to lay a big hit on Spezza, but Spezza was able to avoid it. Good heads up play on Spezza's part. And Hughes up to center. He'll clear it in for Canada. Ott looking for it. Boshenkov clears it up around the board. Spezza not able to get there to keep it in. Played up ahead, stepping in over the line is Muratov. Gets a shot away. What a play by Muratov. He was surrounded by three Canadian players, and he fought his way loose and got a decent shot on goal. Bomeister coming back in for Canada. Heatley up there in support. Lundmark not able to knock that down. Clearing it down the ice. And that is an icing call on Russia. Games usually close between Canada and Russia at the World Junior Championship. Last year, Canada lost three. Do you remember the great chance Eric Schwinard had at the dying seconds face off in the offensive zone back in 1999 in front of a packed house in Winnipeg? It was overtime. Artem Shubarov scored at 5-13 of sudden death to clinch the goal, the first ever goal for Russia at the World Junior Championship. Puck bouncing around there, loose at the side. Swing wide, Kovalchuk looks across, Shastin is with him. And here's Heatley. Camilleri. Kovalchuk steps in, spun off the check. Oh, what a move by Shastin, and he wasn't quite able to finish off. Heatley, back for Canada. Heatley doesn't have anybody with him, though. No, well, he took a look over his shoulder, but... His line mates had already gone to the bench to change. Svitov burrows in deep, throws it across. There was nobody there for the Russians that time. Puck bouncing out. Here comes McKenzie. Gets it back. Takes the return feed. Oh, nice stop right there. Point blank by Medvedev. Delayed penalty coming up against Russia. And Canada will get a big chance on the power play, trailing 2-1. to one. Get together packs, you get 12 Canadian 12 Cruise Light and one of four great warm up gear items. Hi, Chris. Hey, nice. Must be the good drinking age, no purchase necessary. And Spitoff goes to the penalty box, a big opportunity here for Canada. McCarthy, Canada's goal scorer in this game, throws it up deep. Jackman with them back at the blue line. Boys. Spezza and Rafi Torres up front to start things off in this power play. Vera Jackman getting it up ahead. Spezza was looking for it. McKenna did, didn't have a good breakout. They've got to get together here, get their passes on, and the ice is starting to snow up a bit, so they've got to make sure of each and every pass, and they should be shorter passes. Jackman rolls it in. Spezza gets it in front. Here's the chance. Stop point blank. Medvedev covers it up. Everybody piles in there. Brad Boys was the man. Boys didn't get the shot away, though, that he wanted to. Not from a good scoring position. Canada using some 
quick little passes here were able to get that first shot away. That was Boise. And then they started to scramble, looking for that loose puck. 116 to go on the power play, and they move the faceoff back outside the blue line because the Canadian defenseman came in to take part in that little crowding session in front of Medvedev. Pitched in on goal there by Stephen McCarthy. Heatley gets it back for McCarthy, works it over. Jackman, big chance, ping that one just wide. And the puck ends up on the mesh, and we get a whistle, one minute to go on the power play. Jackman knew that he had some room, short side. He really teed it up perfectly. He saw there was some room on the stick side, but he just couldn't quite put that puck there, but it wasn't through lack of trying. Here comes Kovalchuk. Remember, Russia has been very dangerous shorthanded. Kovalchuk fires it in, and Wallet forced to cover it up. Well, so far in this hockey game, Kovalchuk has been very impressive on individual efforts. He's strong, he's got great quickness as far as breaking through, and his strength shows. But for me, Jason Spezza has definitely been the best playmaker throughout this game. Kovalchuk with a couple of scoring chances. The best one early in the first period. Heatley trying to barge his way through. He had Reed with him. Heatley, Lundmark, and Reed out there for Canada. Jackman fires it in. The only defenseman is McCarthy. Reed up into the corner. Jason Spezza comes over the boards. Bullmeister out there as well. 15 seconds left in the power play for Canada. Here comes Spezza. Shovels it up ahead. Lundmark muscling his way in. Gets it up to the corner. Heatley taps it up ahead for Spezza. He lets it go there back in the net for Lundmark, who sort of augured himself into the ice there and lost control. And the penalized player back on the team's at even strength. Smart play there by Jason Spencer just to let that puck go so Heatley could get it and probably would have had a better scoring opportunity. 6.20 to play in the third period. And Canada is trailing Russia by a score of 2-1. to one. Ham Hughes takes it off the boards, dodges around one man, up towards the corner, took a shot there from Bochenkov. Gets some help now from Ott. Spezza centers it in front of the net, and Zygamanis wasn't able to control. Moratov up for Duma. Up towards the corner, Bomeister revs him along the wall. Zygamanis trying to knock it away from Moratov. Now Zygamanis for Canada, getting it up ahead for Spetsa. That's broken up in the neutral zone by Moratov. Trying to play it up. Ott knocked that down. Spetsa dishing up ahead for Zygamanis. Canada need to use their speed more through the neutral zone. When the Russians are laying back and trapping as they're doing right now in the neutral zone, Canada can beat that trap by using the speed. Tougher to do when the ice is slow, as it is the case now. No question, and especially trying to get the puck to that open man. Boys up there working it hard along the boards, couldn't quite come up with it. He has played a strong game for Canada, has Brad Boys. You see the Russians are just laying back right now and forcing Canada to have to pass the puck or carry. Puck played up ahead, knocked down. Schultz moves it ahead. Boys, big shot, lifted on goal, that was stopped. Medvedev getting in front of it. Knocked down, boys after the game, coming up there with Torres. Here's Boys, here's Torres. Oh, he had a great chance there at the side. Moratov battling back out. In over the line now for Canada, Popovic shooting. That's grabbed by Medvedev, and he will hold on to it. Four and a half minutes to go. Hang on for the ride.
just back underway. Ham Hughes with it for Canada. Plays it up ahead. Jackman firing that puck in deep. Lundmark up there after it. Gets it up along the boards. Kovalchuk clears it up. All alone. Shasteen moving in. Shoots. And Willette was there with the stop. And great hustle by Barrett Jackman to get back. Jackman battling along the boards against Shasteen. And now Heatley for Canada. Camilleri back up ahead for Lundmark. Looking for some help, and he gets it from McCarthy. He penetrates it around back of the net, centers it out there. Lundmark was being tied up. No way he could get loose to get a stick on that. Kovalchuk coming in, trying to get by Bullmeister. And Bullmeister wins that battle decisively. Heatley, long pass up. Lundmark to Jaspers. Back across for Lundmark. He'll catch up with it here along the boards. And the puck cleared along the boards and out. Very confusing. There's a lot of whistles in the stands that are being blown. McCarthy in over the blue line and offside. Game story brought to you by Chevrolet. Safe and fun hockey. Butterlin with one goal. Actually two, but they've officially credited him with only one. McCarthy with Canada's goal. A couple of things. When Canada get deep on the forecheck, they're going to have to watch for that long pass. As soon as the Russians get it, they're now looking for that long pass, knowing full well Canada under pressure are trying to forecheck and forecheck deep. The other thing is Canada's got to look for their open point man and use them. Jaspers gets it there for Svetsa. He was looking for McKenzie in front. And the puck rolling down the ice. Stan Butler with a couple of different combinations here in the third period. Mixing the lines up a little. He's getting Spezza out there more often. McKenzie gets it in deep. Nikryev is clearing it down the ice, and it's an icing call on the Russians. Jason Spezza with a goal and an assist in the tournament. Dangerous offensive player. Interesting thing about Spezza, the hollow ground on the bottom of his skate, he has it almost flat, almost like a goaltender's skate, and he thinks that allows him to move laterally a little better. On the way out, Muratov clearing it in. Wooderlein looking for it. Look at that, everybody back in the neutral zone for the Russian team. Tough to get through that trap. Boys blowing a wheel there in the neutral zone. Well, they've done that in the third period, but they haven't done it consistently. And I wonder whether that's the players that have just decided on their own that the way that they want to play or whether that's the coaching. Well, there's a couple guys up there deep now. Under two minutes to go, and Canada down 2-1. to one. Shades of one year ago when Canada lost a heartbreaker by one goal. Battling it valiantly to the final whistle. Muratov comes in. Bomeister back to pull him down. And the fans hollering for a penalty. Or rather, whistling for one. Camilleri for Canada. Fights his way in over the blue line, but the puck stolen and cleared back. Here's Heatley, over to Bullmeister, Svitov watching him, swept in there deep. One mark, Heatley, all hands on deck for Canada. Camilleri up there too. Svitov looking for some room, couldn't get it out on the second attempt, does. Up to Kovalchuk, he'll step in, Shastin is with him, Kovalchuk shoots. That one low and just wide. Svitov with a shot. Kovalchuk doesn't like to pass that puck too much, though, in the offensive zone. He wants to shoot it from whatever position he's at. Less than a minute to go in the game. Canada down 2-1. to one. Maxime Ouellette heads to the bench. Canada with the extra attacker. Camilleri up after it. Gets it around back of the goal. McCarthy works it to Heatley. Back to Jackman. Shoots. It was just too crowded. There was too much traffic. And Kovalchuk... Well, ice this one.
An empty net goal for Ilya Kovalchuk, and it's 3-1 to one, Russia. Now the Canadians were pressing. Jackman looks back at the point. Spezza was right here. Spezza was calling for that puck, but unfortunately there were just too many white sweaters for Jackman to be able to get it through. But I thought this was a little bit of a hot dog move on Kovalchuk's part. Just put the puck in the net and then do your celebrating afterwards. Put a little mustard on it. So a timeout call. It was the Russian team calling the timeout. 34 seconds left. So Canada with a win, a tie, and poised on the verge of a loss here, barring a miraculous finish. Well, I'll tell you, we talked about Kovalchuk right from the start of the show, and he has, without question, been a very good player here today. His skill level and his size and strength are definitely of NHL caliber. But I'm not so sure that I'd, I'd want to be the coach right now that ends up with this player who is very, I think he's selfish, Paul, and I know that some people will dispute it, but he's shown that to me here today. He's a little bit of a different sort, but he's a very talented one. There's Schultz just ragging the puck back. Time will tick down. And a lot more pressure on the Canadian team heading into their final game against Switzerland as they come out on the bat end of a 3-1 margin. Russia, 3-1 winners. Well, Stan Butler asked his team to give a big effort today. And that they did. There is no question about it. After yesterday's game against Finland, which they tied, they came back with a bigger effort today. The second period was the period that they should have won, should have been able to score goals, and unfortunately for Canada, they just couldn't find the net. Well, a different title on the book, but the ending just the same as it was one year ago. Yet another close game between Canada and Russia, and once again, Canada coming out on the short end of the score, but not for lack of a great effort. Welcome to my Hall of Fame. Home of the quickest, most awesome player to ever hit the ice. The place where with one unexpected move, I can single-handedly bring thousands to their feet. What's your dream? down the most entertaining movie of the holiday season Grab my hand. Grab it. an adrenaline pumping heart stopping emotionally charged adventure We're you home. strap yourself in for the most fun you'll have at the movies this year vertical limit now playing in theaters everywhere Interesting. Collect McDonald's NHL hockey cards featuring today's hottest players. This year with three awesome subsets. A three card pack just 89 cents plus tax when you buy any size fries. Okay, Kyle. Let's talk Joseph. I just traded him for Allison Flynn's phone number. Sometimes. 
Look with moderation. Tiso, hypnotic suggestion. Hey, look at this. Check this out. Get the flashlight. Get the flashlight. Never has so much power gone into our battery. Introducing Duracell Ultra. With new M3 technology, it's the most powerful alkaline battery in the world. Time now for the TSN turning point. We take you back to the third period with the Russians leading 1-0 on the power play. Anton Volchenkov, the Ottawa first round pick, breaks his stick. Kind of a change-up that's tapped in by Alexander Buterlin, although Volchenkov got credit for the goal. It's the turning point. And a cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association of Canada for the training and development of Canadian coaches in amateur sport on behalf of TSN. Well, Bob McKenzie, what would you think? Terrific hockey game, and I think the challenge for Stan Butler and the Canadian team is to make sure that the kids come out of it with a positive. And that is, not that they lost the game, which they did 3-1, but that they played a very good game and that you take all the things you did well in that game and apply them as you go forward in the next game, obviously, against Switzerland. And you've got to be careful there's not an emotional letdown after a loss like that to Russia. Now a day off for the Canadians and uh, back in action in Switzerland on Sunday. And we'll have a whole lot more in our post-game coverage. We'll hear from Canadian coach Stan Butler. And I wonder if we'll hear about this from Ilya Kovalchuk. Put that in your memory bank. A little mustard on the empty netter. For two lifelong friends. You rode here from Texas. Yes, sir. The adventure of a lifetime. I know the old man likes you. That don't mean he's going to sit still for you courting his daughter. Just became. Fishing to get me in trouble. You are in trouble. A fight for their lives. I knew it would come to this. Don't go down there. Matt Damon. I'm going to make it right. You make bad trouble for yourself. You start that trouble you never even heard of. All the pretty horses. Now in theaters everywhere. me so highly You make me feel like a strong man But now you're looking me over Cause I'm a man and you know how to watch Look with moderation Tiso, hypnotic suggestion Never has so much power gone into our battery. Introducing Duracell Ultra. With new M3 technology, it's the most powerful alkaline battery in the world. New Buckley's Extra Strength Cold and Flu Caplets. Same Buckley's toughness on flu symptoms, no awful taste. Unless, of course, you chew them. Buckley's Extra Strength Cold and Flu. It's tough on the flu. This may be the best thing you watch all night. Crown Royal. Yes, it's that smooth. The third period summary is brought to you by Chevrolet Safe and Fun Hockey. Volchenkov gets credit for the 2-0 goal, although it should be Buterlin with his second of the game. Steve McCarthy scores on the power play to pull Canada within one. Then Ilya Kovalchuk comes back and scores the empty netter. Canada outshot Russia 34-27. to Gary Green made the comment that Ilya Kovalchuk might be a touch selfish, uh, to which I'll say, so what? Uh, so is Brett Hull. He's got 600 <laughs> goals in the National Hockey League. It's the fact of life. You can put the puck in the net, you can be as selfish as you want. He's an obvious talent, and the speed and the skill that he's got, and the, we saw today 
what he's capable of doing. Early in the game, he had that breakaway play. Uh, Maxime Ouellette comes up with a big save, and then Kovalchuk puts the icing on the cake with the empty net goal. And he's an excitable guy, and he's a bit of a hot dog, and take what you will. But the same things were being said about Pavel Bure, Alexander McGillney, and all those players have gone on to star in the National Hockey League, and I'm sure that Kovalchuk will too. A lot of scouts uh, came away, I'm sure, impressed with his effort. Jason Spezza as well. Uh, from a Canadian perspective, you say you played well, but you also have to say you lost. And, and what do you think the Canadians will look to change, not just for the next game against Switzerland, but maybe beyond that? Well, I don't know that you change that much. Uh, you know, you can overreact to a loss like this, and I think Stan Butler will make sure that he tries to make sure the players on the team take positives from it. And you've got to be careful, too, in analyzing the game for the fans at home or people in the media or whatever to sit there and say, well, the Canadian problem is an old one. They couldn't score goals. They couldn't put the puck in the net. They had all sorts of opportunities. And some people will say, well, that's a reflection. Our skill level is not good enough. All I would say to that is I saw an enormous amount of skill from both teams on the ice today. And the goals that were scored by the Russian team, the first goal glanced in off a skate. The second goal was a broken stick shot from the point that Maxime Ouellette would have loved to have back. So it wasn't a case of sitting there and saying, well, the other team that won put all these beautiful goals in the net. They got the goals in the net. They deserve to win. That's the bottom line. But I don't think there's anything but positives to take from this game from Canada. Although you now, as you go through it, if you don't end up at the top and you won't end up in first place in the, uh, in the pool, you want to try to end up in second place as best you can to try and get a little easier draw in the quarterfinal sudden death elimination round. Uh, if you end up in third or fourth place, chances are you're going to be meeting the Czech Republic or the United States in that, uh, that quarterfinal elimination game, and that makes things a little more difficult to get to the final. We mentioned the Ilya Kovalchuk goal. Uh, Barrett Jackman was the Canadian defenseman back on the point. A moment ago, he spoke with our Paul Romanek. Thanks, Gord. Uh, Barrett, as you said just before we came up, uh, great game, uh, wrong ending, particularly there at the end. Uh, what was your decision process there? You had a guy rushing at you, and it was a tough situation whether to try to shoot or pass it. Yeah, I, I didn't have anyone to pass it. I should have just shot in the corner, but uh, you know, I thought I saw an opening, and you know, I closed up quickly, and then before I could uh, you know, take the shot back, uh, you know, went off the shin pad in the other way. I know how hard you compete and uh, the pain threshold you play with is legendary amongst uh, players your age, junior hockey players. When you put so much into a game like this, uh, what's the toughest thing about coming out on the wrong end of the score? Uh, you know, just I think the, the best thing is that, uh, you know, we're going to come back and uh, we got another game in, in, in two days here. So, you know, I just, just uh, you know, put this one out of our mind and, uh, you know, worry about, uh, you know, the rest of the round robin. And, uh, hopefully we get, uh, you know, in, in, in the preliminary rounds. And, and in the finals, we have to play them again and, uh, you know, beat them for the gold medal. What do you have to say about your team's effort? Oh, I thought the guys played hard. Uh, you know, a lot of guys are, uh, you know, icing a lot of bumps and bruises right now. And, and uh, you know, you can't say enough about the character on this team. Everyone, uh, nobody gave up and, you know, kept going. So, uh, you know, hopefully that, that carries on in the next game. Well, Barra, thanks for your time. I know from a Canadian fan's point of view, it wasn't a great ending. But from an overall hockey point of view, that was a great game. You should be really proud of yourself. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Or a Jackman assistant captain with the Canadian team. Gord. All right, Paul, thanks very much. Elsewhere on this day four of the World Junior Hockey Championship, Switzerland beats Belarus by a score of three to one. That was earlier today, so Belarus obviously is not going to make the medal round of this competition. The Czech Republic beats the United States by a score of four to two. This game was tied at one in the second period, but the Czechs scored once on a two-man advantage and then 30 seconds later scored again on the power play. And it's worth knowing that Vaclav Nedaros, the first round pick of the Colorado Avalanche, scored twice in that game. The Czechs remain undefeated. Also, Sweden beats Kazakhstan 8-2. That score a little bit deceiving. Kazakhstan led that game 1-0 after one period. It was tied at one, or tied at two rather, in the second before the Swedes blow it open. All right, let's take you through the standings now. In Pool A, the Czech Republic, the defending gold medalists in this event, now go to 3-0. The United States and Sweden are two and one. Slovakia and Kazakhstan remain winless. And in Group B, this of course is where you'll find Canada. Russia is now on top of the group. Finland has a game in hand on Canada, still has to play Russia and Belarus in the round robin. Canada and Switzerland are tied right now for third spot. And they have equal records of a win, a loss, and a tie. Bob, you had something you wanted to say. Some interesting permutations on the standings. Obviously, the game against Switzerland is key. Canada has to win that or wants to win that to give themselves as favorable position as possible. The betting right now is that Canada, if they can win that game against the Swiss, are going to finish in second or third place. That means almost they'll be destined almost certainly 
to meet a second or third place team from the other side. And at that point, it certainly looks like Sweden or USA. So you don't want to get ahead of yourself because they haven't put the two points in the bank against Switzerland, a team that tied the Russians, a team that lost by one goal to Finland, uh, but struggled a little bit to get some goals against Belarus. But if Canada can put that win in the bank against Switzerland, you can almost bank on the fact that they'll be playing Sweden or the USA in a sudden death quarterfinal elimination game. And that's uh, certainly... Uh a prospect we've seen before uh, in this tournament, and uh, you relish Canada, U.S. And I have to be honest, you'd love to see Canada play Russia again, uh, not so much for the revenge factor, but just that was one of the great games we've seen at the World Junior Hockey Championship. When we come back, we'll hear from Canadian coach Stan Butler. You're watching the 2001 World Junior Hockey Championship live on TSN. TSN and Canadian Hockey. On Friday, Canada and Russia played a classic at the World Junior. Maxim Ouellette and Andre Medvedev staged a brilliant goaltending battle. But in the end, it was the Russians who came out with a 3-1 victory. Now Canada closes out the round robin against Switzerland. We just got to uh, step her up a notch and play even better against Switzerland and uh, make sure we win. Hockey's hockey, and the harder the team that works the hardest usually wins. That's Canadian hockey, and um, we always rise to the occasion, and that's what we're going to do again. Here's Jackman, works it up ahead, Boyd shoots, and Brad scores! Steve McCarthy for Canada! TSN presents the 2001 World Junior Hockey Championship. Today, Canada and Switzerland close out the round robin. 